We're live. Barbers! What's going on, everybody? I go by the name of It's Marvy Marv. And you are now tuned in to Gem Talk, where we have conversations that inspire greatness. Feels a little weird saying that. That's the first time I said that. It's usually the Barber's Podcast. But we doing Gem Talk today, and I got my guy, Andy, authentic in the building, bro. What's good, Andy? What's going on? What's up, Barber World? How you feeling, bro? I appreciate you for taking some time to kick it with me to have a, a nice little conversation and debate. No, thank you, man. Thank you for sharing the platform. And as you already know, man, it's been fun. It's been a blast promoting this this live. It woke me up, got me excited about the industry, got me excited about posting. And literally, bro, I was I was dying as I was posting some of these some of these videos. Yeah. Every time I saw your videos, I was going insane, bro. Awesome. Matter of fact, hold up a second. Speaking of that, let me let me uh. I mean, let's 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 see what you was doing, bro. This is how this is how you did me, fam. Let's let's see how you did me real quick. <laughs> yeah, you did me like that, bro. Oh man, I love that video, man. That was good, but this one had this one here. That one there that you're about to click on, I gotta explain it to some people. Marv, Marv is the guy that right now he is promoting multiple haircuts per hour. And I have not heard him talk about if you're too uh, booked, you're too cheap in a long time. I had to find this jewel, find the jewel buried away in his page. Let's see. Let's see what you did here, bro. Let's see how you barbers. I don't know one of the biggest lies that humanity has ever been told many barbers in our industry are honored at the fact that they're booked weeks and months out in advance you don't want to be that barber bro wait a minute who are you bro who was the first person that told people this lie you being booked out weeks and months in advance is showing you that your demand is high supply and demand i would be so rich if you're booked out like that raise your price a few bucks i don't know man we just gotta stop repeating these lies bro go up five bucks raise your prices when you raise your prices hopefully you lose 10 percent of your client which creates an opportunity for you to get new clients at your new price point well you know the customer is always right right <laughs> Why you put the cheap over my barber's logo like that, bro? Bro, three cuts an hour. Three cuts an hour. Bro, why you doing me like that? I, I, I opened it and said cheap barbers. I'm like, what he got going on here? And then you clip me all up, man. How you? Bro, come <laughs> on, bro. That was awesome, though. Hey, but I got to tell the people, man. I hit up Marv before I even did it. I said, Marv, if I put this over your logo... You gonna be all right with it? He said, "Man, do whatever you gotta do, man. Let's have fun with it." And I respect that, man. I respect that. Yeah, of course. You know, you, you gotta be a good sport about all this, right? Like, obviously, we're gonna talk about a lot of the things we agree on, but we're gonna talk about obviously the things we disagree on too. So, yeah, yeah. it's I feel like the 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 thing that gets lost nowadays, and you can tell me your thoughts on this. I feel like what gets lost is how much of an impact roasting has on the culture. I feel like my whole career in the shop, that's what the clients love. That's what makes it fun with the barbers is us just roasting and having fun with each other. But then when we do it online, it's, for some reason, it, it it gets taken real personal a lot of times. And it's like, bro, it's, it's, it's not that deep. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just straight up hate. But other times it's just we just roasting each other. You know, I mean, it depends on the people doing it, I guess. You know, I, I know you. Personally, you you a good dude, so I know where the energy was coming from, and I mean, you know, online there's a there's a bigger audience technically, so that's why some people might take it like different. But man, that shit was just straight fun, bro. Like your energy's dope. I know where it came from. It was, it was literally like a I got inspired artistically. Now you put up something, I was like, oh shit, I gotta come up with something. I gotta look for something. You know, Bro, this this one had me dying because I, I I initially put Andy authentic feeling burnt out after doing five, yeah, yeah. but then I'm like I I gotta you know reach a broader audience if I say new age barbers, but 
<laughs> no, that's dope. That's Pretty dope. hard. I think I'll go home now. <laughs> yeah, that, that was smart of you. What's that up? was smart of you. That was smart of you for not putting my name up there because you could probably just keep those on your page and they'll keep you know getting uh, reactions. Me, I'm like, man, I, I feel like I got to take mine down because they were all like targeted towards Marv. Yeah, well, I mean, that, yeah, that does make sense. And and that strategically, you're right because even when I did like some of the deluxe stuff, um, I, you know, obviously, I don't want to have just a whole page of full of whoever I'm doing a conversation with, right? Yeah. So, um, with with these content pieces, I can always go back and change the captions if I wanted to, you know, what mm -hmm. I mean, and, and keep them up. Whereas some of the uh, stuff with deluxe. That is just like I'm not gonna have deluxe for six posts on my page. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah, that's smart. That's smart. Did you watch that conversation or not? I, I caught a little bit of let's see, de oh nah, deluxe. I, I I caught some of the end of that one. That's the guy that was charging like multiple hundreds of dollars per haircut, but he didn't really cut hair. I didn't get really get that too much. Uh, he, yeah, he's the one that um he markets the 20k a month on 20 cuts. You know, two two fifty a cut. People driving to see you 10 hours. Yeah, this is something that I wanted to bring up. I'm glad I'm glad you kind of brought it up with that price point, right? There's there's LA prices, there's Atlanta prices, there's New York City prices, there's Miami prices, there's you know, there's some parts, very few parts of our country where a hundred dollar, two hundred, three hundred dollar haircuts are more common. I'm pretty sure we're talking today to the people that are in between that. You know, trying to get out of that fifteen, twenty dollar bad place to be, and there's places in America that are still stuck there. Very few, but there's still some there. Up to the thirty five dollar, I think twenty five thirty five dollars is like pretty. I would say that's an average right now. Yeah, I know. I know your sweet spot's been like forty, fifty dollar with tip, but I think that's less common. In, in an average for the U.S. So you're thinking from your perspective, you think it's lower. You think barbers are getting yeah. what, 20, 30? Yeah. I think, I think there's some places out here where people are still charging $15 for a kid, you know, that crazy $22 for an adult. There's, there's, there's a lot of that. When I traveled with Babelist Pro, right, their job was to send Andy Authentic. I, I still do it sometimes, but Andy Authentic to like Boise, Idaho, right? To influence people to work with our tools. But what I also saw was there were people out there who had trouble raising their prices or, you know, they're still charging $12, $14, $17. So I, I did see a lot of that. That's why it scares me not to encourage people to raise their prices. Amongst other things, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. And that's what we're going to dive into. Um but before we even move forward, I, I do want to make sure I mention to you guys, number one, make sure you follow Andy Authentic. If you don't already follow Andy, you need to. All right. Subscribe to the channel. Um, if you value what we're doing over here, if you want to see more conversations like that, uh, like this and the conversation I've been having, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also, man, take a screenshot of this. Share it to your story. Tag me and Andy in it. Uh, that way we can show you some love and that way you can let some people know that we're over here uh, having a, a good conversation. We're having a debate. We're having a discussion and uh, we can get some more people on here. Also, make sure you guys, if you got questions, all right, ask them. We might not answer them right away because we're going to be in flow. We're going to be in conversation. We're going to be talking about, you know, certain things. But what we're able to do, at least uh, on our on our end, is save the questions so that way as we're moving along, um, we can start answering some of the questions. So don't be scared to ask anything. Uh, you, Andy's an honest dude. I know Andy. He'll answer whatever he got to. I'll answer whatever I got to. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> ask whatever questions. Uh, somebody said, yo, I can't follow Andy. He blocked me. Yeah, he put... You must have been doing something wild. If yeah, you're being blocky, man. You must. Uh, I'll, but you know what, though? I go through little seasons. Yeah. If I'm like, somebody comments certain things on my page and you like it, you oh. could get blocked for that in a oh. certain season. So oh. I got I to gotta, I gotta check it out. I got to check it out. Yeah. Lord, Lord, daddy, I'll, I'll go check out what yeah. happened. 
Yeah, yeah. Just, just just type your Instagram name and he can see what's up. I'm always open to reconciliate, though, man. I'm not a grudge holder. I love it. So let's talk a little bit about what led to this conversation. So um, let me pull this up, actually, real quick. Now, I, I, the last time me and you talked live was about the repost pages. I don't know if you remember that. We was going in. Yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember the that. whole repost idea. And, you know, we have our thoughts on that. Maybe we'll tap into some of that, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's always fun. But yeah. um, then we were supposed to go live. Um, with the Jalen Rose stuff, when right. uh, he made the video that he did the hundred, uh, that everybody that people should pay hundred dollars for a good haircut, which I don't know if you guys know. For those of you who may be new to Andy, let me actually pull this up real quick. Bro had the most viral haircut of all time. All time, baby. Bro, this was the most viral haircut of all time. I seen this one on uh Google too, bro. Appreciate that. That's dope. I like that. And yeah, that was a lot, people, a lot of people making a lot more money today thanks to that haircut, man. Yeah, how was that, bro? Before we even dive into what we're diving into, how was that whole moment for you? I remember I was so happy for you and and, and proud of you, bro, because I know how hard you've been grinding and the work you put in, and for you to have that that moment, which it was yeah. dope, man. How did it feel? Yeah, if I if I could try to tap it tap into that feeling in those times again, I mean it wasn't really that long ago, but so much has happened since. Uh, it, it did feel like that. It felt like, wow, you know, like all these hair shows and educating myself, learning how to do these techniques, you know, posting, uh, you know, I've been on the gram for 10 years, bro. Right. So for me to still like be relevant and still, you know, have an influence, I think is dope. So uh, that haircut to go viral, it gave me like a real taste of what it felt like to be the topic on social media you know and that's crazy like everywhere you look you see a meme all your family like people just see like what the, is going on on my page they don't know what's going on like behind the scenes i got friends that i haven't seen in five ten years sending me a picture of my client telling me yo i just uh, you know i'm in florida i stopped in this town in the middle of nowhere i told them that i know Jalen rose's barber they said andy authentic they want to facetime you you know it's just it's, it's crazy how fast that happened. And, and you know, it was, it was hilarious. I saw a couple funny memes that I just, I just thought it was dope to be like part of like culture of like history. You know what I'm saying? Like that's never going to get erased. Bro, that was the most viral haircut I, in my career. Right. Cause I, I've been cutting hair since 2010 and being involved with the online world. I feel like in, in my experience, that was the most viral haircut like a barber thing that I witnessed. Can you think of anything that was like bigger than that? Well, the only time I ever remember like something being like standing out, a haircut being standing out is the Steve Harvey back in the day. Yeah, for sure. Like everybody started, was sharp before he went bald. Yeah. That was before social media, but, uh, oh man, uh, you know, maybe Allen Iverson's braids that, that made a, a lot of noise when I was a kid. I shoot it had when I had hair. I actually had me growing hair trying to get some cornrows. But yeah, other than that, man. I mean, I'm talking about. I had people driving two or three hours asking me for the Jalen Rose, hundred hundred fifty dollars all day long. Tell uh, the craziest part, man, was see this is <laughs> you can't knock me for wanting to raise prices, bro. Because this shit, I've been I lived through so much crazy stuff. I've had people come down to my shop, right? They'll book a VIP appointment is a buck 25, whatever. And they'll be like, I'm surprised that's all you charged. Like, you know how, how crazy that makes you feel when somebody drives two or three hours to come get a haircut from you, you charge them what's then your head is like top dollar and they go, I'm surprised that's all you charged. Like they was ready to, I could have, I could have killed them during that six to 12 month uh, time when that haircut was going crazy. Uh yeah, man. They would have gave me like two fifty a cut if I asked for it at that at that time. Yeah, bro. It, it was do a dope moment. Like I said, I, I I was so hyped for you. Like I was like living through you. I'm like, yo, Andy's doing his thing. Cause I, you know, I I've been we've been cool for some years now. But like, you know, I've told you this before. You were one of the first people that when I started building on social media and stuff like that. When I'm finding the people that were inspiring me, you were one of them. You know what I mean? Like, so I know how long you've been doing this because you was doing it before I got active. And then 
I don't know if you guys ever heard me share this. I'm sure I have in, in one of my podcasts because I've done 140 of them. But uh, when I started doing a lot of the barbers videos and I started dropping game and um, doing my best to empower barbers and sharing insights, uh, Andy was one of the people who I, I seen in BarberCon New York. And, uh, you know, I, I said what up to him again because we had connected at that point. I, I remember I hired you for the New York State Barber Expo. You came down, judge and all that. So, so we had, you know, a, a little relationship started up. So I remember I seen him in, in New York City and uh, he was telling me like, yo, bro, yo, yo, keep those videos going, man. Like, I, I love what you're doing. I like it. You got something with it. Keep them going. And the same way I inspire y'all and Andy inspires y'all that are tapped in right now. Bro, when he told me that, I'm like, I must have something. If Andy Authentic, you know what I mean, <laughs> is saying I got some, I got to keep going. So, you know, like I, 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 I've done my best to give you your flowers a, a handful of times, and this is just an opportunity for me to do it again, you know, and, and thank you because um, we're cool. You know what I mean? We've been able to develop a friendship, but that, like, I'll never let that take away from the fact that, like, you were one of the first people to really motivate me, bro, and inspire me and to show me that you could do more in this industry. So it's always dope to see where we've been able to take uh, this and, and where we're going to take it. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Respect. You always, you, you honestly always give me those flowers and I appreciate it the same way I give flowers to the, to the guys who motivated me. And uh, I remember very distinctly what stood out about you when I first met you. It was around the time. See, there's different graduating classes, right? At, Every our industry has like when I started, it was Pacino's, uh, Curtis Smith, Danny Amorium, you know, th those guys. Then it was Lowe's Cut It, Mark the Barber, uh, that class, yeah, right. right. Then it was like maybe another class, then it Some was of the pioneers right there, right. So every class, so I remember when your class was right after me, and I remember seeing you, you know, bring making your way up. And I, and I remember talking to you at a hair show and it was back then, you know, you could see that barbers were starting to feel like celebrities. Yeah. It was when barbers first started showing up to hair shows and people were lining up to take pictures with them and you would get a barber every now and then that wouldn't take his shades off because he was too cool of a barber for us. Right. No, yeah. I remember Marv saying something along the lines of you had created content or you did something or you used to just say it. You used to say like, yeah, you know, don't worry, barbers. You, you don't need these barbers who who wear sunglasses indoors to, to approve of you. Yeah, or yeah. You, you said something yeah, like that. Yeah, and I was like, I was, like, yo, I was yeah. like, yo, this dude, he don't give a fuck. He, he's like <laughs> he's going at these like high and mighties at the time. Right. And that's when I was like, yeah, he's not going to follow the rules. Yeah. He's yeah. going to break some rules. And then ever since then, you know, I just, it's been fun watching how you did it your way. I appreciate it, bro. And that's, I think one of the uh, key reasons we connect is because you've been in this game doing it your way. You know what I mean? We, we, we're challenging the status quo. We challenge the boundaries and we do our best to, to, to express ourselves and to express our art, however the hell we feel we want to do it. So. Again, I think that's why we um, connect so good. So let's talk about how we got here real quick. Let me um, – so you posted this. Let me pull that up. Boom. And I, you posted a post, and I shared this right here. You posted, if you're booked and turning out walk-ins on Friday and Saturday, but you're sitting down browsing on your phone Tuesday and Wednesday, congratulations, um, you're playing yourself, right? right. Um, which then led us to having a conversation where right. – where we talked about a bunch of stuff, but we talked about how um, you were feeling when it comes to some of this, like uh, the barber ego and the humbleness, right? The humility in our industry. Yeah. And uh, it led to me posting how it's wild to me to see so many successful hundred dollar a cup booked up barbers who've done so much in their career and for the industry stay humble while also seeing so many broke barbers who ain't done nothing, but make a couple cool videos and post a few clean cuts online at cocky and arrogant. Um, like they're too good for people. And, uh, you commented on it and then uh it led us here right yeah. um and then we had some other stuff too that we're going to get into um but that spoke that post specifically bro like um where where did that come from you know what 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 made you want to talk about this whole idea of if you're booked you know turning down the cuts 
um, you're playing yourself? Where did that get inspired? So, I mean, I'm a business owner, you know, I'm a shop owner. I see like, I know where I came from, right? Uh, about 10 years ago, I started doing this full time. I knew what it took for me to get booked. I knew what type of energy I had to have towards walk-ins, towards clients. You know, I knew what I needed to accomplish with my schedule before I could start sifting through my best clients and keeping them or raising prices, stuff like that. So I see the direction that the industry is going. I think uh, mobile booking apps have helped us, but have also hurt certain barbers i think social media has helped us but it's hurt certain barbers and i think just the value of the that the barber has nowadays it's helped a lot of us make more money but it's also hurt the growth of a lot of a lot of dudes that are coming into our industry and for anybody who doesn't know man me and marv we agree on a lot we publicize our dis our one percent disagreement but we we agree on a lot so you know, I just I just got to remind, you know, sometimes the people around me or anybody in general, man, like it, you got to be humble in this industry. You can't you can't get cocky just because to me, it's crazy. If you're booked Friday, Saturday, back to back and you're turning down clients and then let's say in a couple of weeks you have a slow Tuesday and you go, oh, it's because school started again or people are on vacation. No, man, it's it's just time. the way it is in the barber world. You got to see, this is how I feel, right? If I come in on Thursday and two people cancel and I don't get that money back, if I don't cut a walk in or, or some, I can get somebody in there, Friday comes, I'm behind two haircuts. I got to get that money back. Right. You know, I, and I believe also anytime you're in the shop, you minimum you should be making at the shop is a dollar a minute. Whether it's two cuts an hour, three cuts, one cut an hour, don't leave that building unless you made at least a dollar a minute. If you're there for eight hours, that's what four eighty. Yep. And uh, if you don't do it, you better come the next day chasing it. You better go get that back. Yeah, I absolutely agree, and I, I love how you said the dollar a minute because that's uh, you know, some of the thinking. I definitely want to make sure we discuss when we talk about pricing. Right. Yeah, you know, we talk about the pricing, the dollar a minute. Um. <laughs> yo, yo, wait, let me um actually pull up because you uh I feel like was it did I fire at you first or did you fire at me first? I, don't I probably remember. I remember I did uh I disagreed with something you said. Yeah, what 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 was it? What did I uh um let me see? Let me go on my page real quick. Oh, here we go. I yeah, got right, it. Right, let me mute the sound. Let me mute the sound. I think it was was it this post right here? When I put this up. Oh, no, nah, yeah, I click love when I click cancel. Uh, this one right here. I see a lot of questions. I'm pretty sure we're going to get to them. Don't give up on us. Yeah, guys, uh, ask your questions. We're starring them. I'm starring them, so we're definitely going to get to them for sure. Was it this post right here when I put two to three cuts an hour at $40 per cut? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one time where I commented, but I've commented a couple of times on, on your stuff. That one there, I just I think that's a, that's a stressful day right there to me. When I think three cuts an hour, I think stress. Okay, so let's talk about it while we're here then. So I put two to three cuts an hour, and I put work a six-hour shift. What about that? Is, do you feel it's stressful? Um. All right, so let's say a 20-minute haircut, right? This is my opinion. Yeah. Especially if it's a person that you don't know. So if, if I'm cutting – John and I cut John every week. I don't have to ask him his name. I don't have to ask him what he does for work. I don't have to ask him, you know, those questions that you you kind of want to ask people when you cut their hair for the first time. Yeah. So me personally, if I'm cutting somebody's, if I'm doing three haircuts an hour and I'm cutting a complete stranger and he has a beard, I'm going to have a hard time draping him, sitting him down. He's going to look at the mirror. He's going to tell me what he wants. He might pull out a friggin' picture on his cell phone. By the time he does that, I know what he wants at all. Right. And you know how it is. I'm talking real life situation. So he's going to zoom into the sideburn. He's going to tell me how he wants his sideburn. Then he's going to scroll past two more pictures and zoom into a beard on a completely different client. 
by the time this happens, we're into this appointment for like three minutes or we're into this situation, right? For at least three minutes. I got him draped. I got his neck strip on. I pump him up, turn him to the mirror. He's going to tell me what he wants. I start my thing. I start combing through his hair. Once I say, all right, so you, all right, cool. Start combing him, start cutting him. Now I'm asking him, you know, his name, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is how I work. Like, I need to know your name. I need to know what you do for work. I need to know what 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 type of energy you got. What's ask them their credit score or social security uh, number? Here we go. Is that here what you do, bro? Here we go. You, so you I, ask I, them I, what gender they are, what their what their pronouns <laughs> are. That's I, what you I, do. How do you like. identify? Yeah. So I need to know what he does. Like, is he a dude that stays indoors? Is he a dude that's gonna be out there clubbing? Is he clubbing this weekend, or is he taking care of his? backyard this weekend you know what i'm saying that's gonna affect how this haircut if he tells me he's gonna go out this weekend that might want me to style his hair by the time i'm done with the haircut because i need to show him how we're gonna do this this crop right so now we're getting products involved now and and mind you before i even started the haircut before i invited him to the chair i took two or three minutes to disinfect my tools right Let's not forget we're supposed to do that. And I mean, barbers, I know we take a lot of shortcuts, but when you spray barbicide on your tools or you dip your combs in, in barbicide, or I mean, spray clipper side, dip in barbicide, there's a time period where you're supposed to wait until you know your stuff is disinfected. And that's usually more than five minutes, right? Five to eight minutes, seven minutes. I know we all know that. So I know a fifth, I know somebody that cuts four people an hour is not disinfecting their stuff the way they're supposed to. But anyway, I'm not going to hit them with the low blow. I'm not going to call the state board right now. <laughs> you ain't even wiping the hair off your trimmers, bro. Yeah, bro. I know it's not going down, but I'm not going to go down that lane because that's not going to look good on our in industry, right? So uh, I'm cutting this dude. It's going to be hard. So there we go. 10 minute contact time for Barbicide. But like I said, I don't want to make, I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to put a bad, bad look on us right now. So <laughs> I'm cutting this dude's hair. I might style his hair and me personally, right? I know barbers that do two, two haircuts an hour. And, and I hate to say in my shop, but this is where I work. I work in my shop and I'm sure it happens in every shop in the U S but I personally clean my clients, clean their neck, clean behind their ear, clean under their neck, clean their forehead. So when somebody, so when somebody uh, leaves my chair, they don't have hair on them, on their face, on their neck, inside their ear, anywhere. And also when they get up and walk away, we're about to walk away from my station, my station, when they have hair on their back that I see a lot of people leave the shop with, I blow that off with my air, with my air gun. Right. So those are all the details that I get done within my appointment. I don't see a 15, 20 minute barber doing that. Yeah. And I, I absolutely agree that um, squeezing in three haircuts in an hour, is, is, it can be challenging. Right. And I would even say that the barbers that do that, um, obviously there are a lot of variables, right. And, and, and there are the anomaly barbers, but it, it is something that I don't think, a lot of barbers are doing on a, uh, on a consistent basis, especially over a long period of time, right? Because if we are talking about getting burnt out, that's a way to get burnt out too, right? I, I would never deny that, right? Even in that post, that's why I put in a six hour shift, you know, because um, if you're doing two to three haircuts, which is, which is an average and it's a six hour shift, you know, it's a little different than if you're doing two to three cuts in an hour over 12, 14 hours, you know what I'm saying? And um, so, so, my general thinking is I think the sweet spot, I said this a bunch of times for barbers, um, is to get to uh, uh, an average ticket or price point of $40 a cut, 30-minute um, slots, right? And the reason I say that is because I think that that's a practical um, formula that pretty much any barber could do anywhere. Now, three cuts an hour consistently – that's a lot, right? That's why I said two to two to three, right? Because you might have those two that you can get done a little quicker, squeeze in a walk-in or one of your homies hit you up like, yo, you got time and you know you can get through these two a little bit quicker. 
and and now you squeeze them in, they pay you a little extra, right? So that's why I say two to three. But I think overall, in in my opinion, uh, a good sweet spot that barbers can build to get to eighty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars a year is doing um, thirty minutes slots. Now the the argument that you have about what's the uh, price, San- though, Marv? What's the price? Is it thirty dollars plus tip? Thirty five plus tip? Well, I, I mean, it, ultimately. I think if you're getting on on an average ticket, forty dollars, and and you're able to to do um, thirty minute slots, you you're gonna be Tell able to. Price. Tell me the price though. What's the price? What's well, the actual price on the wall? Well, I mean, it depends. I think barbers can do it at thirty dollars a cut, um, forty dollars a cut, fifty dollars a cut. I I don't like anything less than thirty dollars a cut. I, I I think we should at least be at thirty dollars a cut. But I, I'm saying like the the average ticket, if you can get to that spot and then expand beyond that, great. But I, I would say if you're looking for a specific number, bare minimum, it has to be 30. And it's only 30 until you get booked up, like I like I said in the video, right? Because eventually you're going to get to a point where you, if you're good enough and your customer service is good enough, your professionalism is good enough, um, you're going to get to a point where you'll book up. And a lot of barbers love being that barber where they're like, I'm booked up two months in advance or, you know, three months booked out. And I think that's stupid. I think you shouldn't be booked out any more than a, a, a week or two max. And I love Ivan Zoot's strategy of when you're 80% booked over a rolling six week period, then you should go up. He says like whatever percentage I say five bucks, right? So, you know, if you're starting at 30 bucks a cut, you get booked up 80% over a six week rolling period, jump up to 35. You do it again, jump up to 40. I, I like that concept as a way of helping barbers grow while maintaining a clientele, while having a sustainable income. I think that is a proven concept that's worked over and over again. So that's why I, I, I preach that so much. But I do want to say something because I know you want to talk. Uh, as far as the sanitation, I agree with you. Like We do got to work to be more sanitary. And I think one of the ways that we could do that, aside from just you know doing what we're supposed to do by putting the stuff you know, the te- giving it that 10 minute period, right. Um, doing that, but also making sure we're investing in, in, uh, equipment. So you don't necessarily have to use the the same tools on the same people. I know th- th- there's ways you can use the pair of JRLs. Now you spray them down. Now you got your other pair to use on the next cut. And then when the next cut's ready, you use those pair, the, the other pair that just disinfect it or the combs or the brushes and stuff like that. You can allow certain ones to to disinfect in uh, in the allotted time while you're um, using your other tools. And that's a way to to help it so you can keep moving without necessarily having to wait that whole um, 10 minute period. I know I said a lot, but what 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 of that stuck out to you that you want to either rebuttal or, or, or elaborate on? I mean, I just I just want to be realistic with, you know, who who's really like struggling with their prices and uh, really pays attention to this stuff. I think, uh, I think you'd be surprised how many barbershops in the U S are not posting 35 bucks on the wall. Yeah. I think, I think when you get into like a client that's willing to pay more than 35, 45, they're starting to look for quality. Something's got to be at that shop that's going to make them w- want to like drive by supercuts to get to this barber, right? Because yeah. the supercuts are are still doing twenty four dollars with a three dollar coupon. I don't know what 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 they're doing, but I know they do crazy stuff like that. Um, when when you when you have somebody that's approaching forty bucks for a haircut, he he's gonna feel rushed. If you're if you're banging them in and out, and then again, you know, I know this this conversation is really broad, right? Yeah. Some of the clients that you post the two on the side with a chair on top, slick them back, no, barely no edge up. Like we all know, we could do that in twelve minutes, you know, and bang them out. But what about the clients with the full beard and needs the goatee on the inside? He needs you to line them up underneath. Poppy wants his eyebrows done, you know. Yeah, he's looking like for me. I, I think we gotta get him to at least forty five. It's gotta be forty five minutes for him, right? All right. Well, you know, as long as we understand that not every haircut could be done two or three in an hour, and yeah. some yeah. some services just require more time. So I um, I always say too. I say I, I'll let you finish, but I always say 
the part of my formula that I preach too is that you should be able to do 90 to 95 percent of the cuts you do in 30 minutes or less because there's always going to be them exceptions or obviously it depends on what type of barber you are too right but if you're in a in the in the neighborhood barber shop where it's just operating like barber shop like a typical barber shop I think I think you should be able to work or not even be able to you should strive to be able to get your um speed up to the point where you can do 90 percent of your cuts in 30 minutes or less and then obviously a lot of the time to 45 minutes or an hour to 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 poppy that need all that extra stuff. Yeah, I mean it depends where you are. You know, if you're if you're a barber that's booked up, I, I don't see why you need to squeeze everything in in such a short time. And another big topic I want to bring up is conversation during a haircut. Conversations yeah. during haircuts have changed my life. Yeah. You know, and uh, I need time to do that. And uh, and some of my clients need time to talk to me about the things they wanna they wanna talk about. But uh. Yeah, let's just go to the conversation. I forgot what I was going to say with the other thing. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, with the conversation, though, would you agree that, like, me and you are going to have a probably two-hour conversation tonight, and we could probably go for three, four hours, right? But then there's other conversations where, um, you know, you, you want them to end quicker, or even conversations where you might be in them way longer than you want it and wish they were done quicker, right? Like, I, I, I would have, say that— I have those at my chair. Yeah, I, I just, I don't, the point I'm trying to make, the hopefully you find your thought that you want to share, but the point that I, I guess I'm trying to make is that I don't think the time of the conversation determines the quality, because I've been in some long conversations where I'm just like, yeah, I can't wait till this is done, where I've had shorter, a 20, 25 minute conversation where I'm like, yo, that was a, that was a dope conversation. I, I, I don't like the idea of tying length of conversation to overall quality. I don't think I don't I don't think a 25 minute conversation in a 30 minute haircut exists because you, you need time to drape the client. You need time to, for him to walk to the chair. You need time to uh, disinfect your stuff. I don't know. It's just to me that that three minute slot ain't, ain't really there for all that. Well, to give uh, you give you um, some perspective, too, I have on my booking app for first time clients, 45 minutes because because that does play a role. So, so if I'm doing 35 minute slots or 30 minute slots, if you go to book with me, I have a slot that says first time client 45 minutes, because I, I agree, like, especially getting to know somebody, you kind of got to feel them out. You do need that time. I think yeah. I, you know I mean? I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I don't want to tell anybody who cuts two people an hour is it's like not a good way. You should stop this, but it, you, we need to be honest about how that day feels, how that yes. service feels. So if somebody goes into a private suite and this barber is charging 75 plus and he's giving you an hour of his time, you guys are going to cover a lot more ground than somebody who's getting a 14 minute haircut in a 20 minute appointment. So, we're, you know, you guys are going to talk about religion. You guys are going to talk about family. You guys are going to talk about finances. You guys are going to talk about motivation, about goals, about what's next. Like these are different conversations. Like that's between like that's when a client is not just worrying about the haircut. Now it's an experience. Those are those are the guys that aren't just gonna go to anybody. They're those are the guys that are gonna have a hard time replacing you when you when you have that type of service and those type of conversations and that type of detail. Dude. I don't know if you guys have been opening your, your doors now that we're getting this good weather, but I opened my doors in the shop and there's one fly in the shop and I've been trying to kill it with my well, level you, three spray. You, you OG now, you, you done slowed up, Andy. That's the, that's why you need three hours to do your haircuts. You done slowed up, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> this thing has been nagging me, bro, and I think it knows that we started our live. Yeah. Question for you, all right? Okay, you got somebody right now just graduating barber school and decides to go into a barber shop. And the shop they go to is they, they start at $30 a cut, right? So they're they're pretty new. They they only got experience cutting in barber school, maybe a little bit before, and they start in the shop. Yeah. What are you how are you recommending they grow? Cut nothing. What's your strategy for them? Cut nothing but walk-ins all day and night. Go there from Ducks till dawn. As soon as you can get in there and leave last, ask the owner for a key. 
than to cut your ass off. You know, whoever says I need a cut, cut them. If it's a half hour past closing and some dude forgot to bring his son on his birthday and needs a cut, cut them. Don't say so no how do you recommend they, they grow their prices, right? Because if they're starting at 30, because that's the shop minimum for them to start at, at what point, because you want to raise the prices, at what point do they, do you recommend they raise their prices? As soon as they're booked. As what do you consider booked? booked? As soon as you're booked from Tuesday to Saturday or whatever schedule you work. You work five days a week. As soon as that every day is booked to capacity based on your speed, you're booked. As soon as you're turning people down. I never raised my price as a barber until I was turning down at least two or three people a week. As soon as I found myself telling clients that I've had for a year or two, oh, man, I'm sorry, I can't get you this week. I'm booked. I was I raised my prices. And as soon as I got to a price where I felt like I was already double what everybody else in town is, I started offering VIP slots. So if I'm already at 80 and everyone in town is at 40, you got to make sure, you know, I, in my opinion, you don't want to go too crazy with with the prices. So at that point, now I'm charging 125, 150 to come in early. So I, I think VIP barber, slot. Yeah, if you're if your barbershop is open from 10 to 6 and you're working outside of those hours for regular price, you're playing yourself. You need to charge so, double. So how much do they go up when they when double. they jump up? Oh, that first increase? Yeah, yeah. They're 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 booked up now at $30 a cut. What's that first uh, what do the price increases look like? I mean, at least five bucks. I remember I used to raise it five bucks. My last increase was 25 bucks. It just depends on your skill level and how booked you really are and what your clientele is looking like. You know, uh, why, why are they seeking you out? Are you trending online and they're seeking you out because you're just popping and you're on fire? You might want to go higher than five bucks because at that point it's a joke. But if you're just a local kid that has an insane work ethic and everyone is recommending you minimum five bucks. Yeah. And mind you, man, we're talking, these are, these numbers are corny. Like in Atlanta, LA, Miami, the, you know, these places are looking at five bucks like a joke, you know, but I know we have to speak to everyone, but I don't, I, don't, I think 30 bucks minimum for a haircut that 90% of the industry agrees on. I, I think that's corny. I think that's behind. I think we're way behind. And I think in a real in a real world where you're really doing taxes and you're really setting yourself up for success with retirement and you're doing some stock investments and you're taking your kids on vacation when they want to, I don't I don't think 30 bucks for a haircut is gonna get you there. Yeah. So so I guess. Where, and I'm gonna where, break that down when you get me when you give me a chance when the go conversation ahead. goes there. No, I just got a I got one of those slides to share it okay. on the screen. Okay. So, so I think one one of the issues I have, and, and maybe you could touch on it too, is we agree. At the end of the day, we agree, right? Because I, I'm never gonna tell somebody that if you, if you can get whatever number for your a certain haircut, you shouldn't get it. The issue that I, I think a lot of people that follow me realize, but there are people that don't, is that I think the problem is too many barbers are trying to jump to these crazy prices without having the demand to do so. And well, why, I, are they crazy, Mark? why are they crazy? Why do we need a demand to, to raise prices? Or why so, do we need so, to add services? Why do I need to put a hot towel on somebody? I agree. To break I agree. I don't think you have to at all. There was a time when I was... Early in my career, I thought I had to do all that. I thought I had to do the hot towel, the steamer, all this extra stuff. I eliminated that from my 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 you know service because I realized that I didn't have to do that. But we we have to have demand, bro. That, okay, if that's the case, then why when somebody graduates barber school and is working in a shop that starts at thirty bucks, why don't they just jump up to forty forty five bucks? I mean, if the shop is at thirty, that's what that's what the shop is at. But you know I, what I'm I just, saying. I, I agree. I, in theory, like, of course, I would love to see. I would love to see us all be at a, a certain point where it's just like, all right, barbers are getting whatever, the, 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 whatever we agree that the worth is. But I, 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 the, the thing I don't like is us saying that we should raise our prices because we need to know our worth. Right. Worth is worth is created by the 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 market tells you what you're worth. Okay. Like, 
for example, like I I can't sell this hat for five hundred dollars just because I feel like it's worth five hundred dollars, and then say, all right, well, Gucci does it. Gucci sells hats for five hundred dollars. I should start selling hats for five hundred dollars. Well, Andy Authentic charges a hundred dollars, one hundred fifty for VIP. I'm three months out of barber school. I should be able to do it. Bro, Andy done like you done put in work. You built up the demand. You're you're in demand. You you've laid the groundwork to be able to to get to these certain things. And I think because of the internet and because so many barbers lack context, they think that they can just do the same thing simply because they know their worth when they haven't built no demand. The market's going to tell you what you're worth. You just don't get to decide that. Sometimes there's different reasons why you should raise your raise your price. I think the overall bare minimum should be higher just because yeah. so marv in the past what is it three or four years since covid have home values mortgages slash rents gone up bro everything done went up I gas got four bags of groceries Ooh. yesterday it was like 250 dollars all right so that means what that our cost of living is is, is going through the roof i agree i agree right. so, so why do we have to wait to be booked to to realize that we need more money to survive Minimum well, wage. Well. So, so then, so using that, I listen, I agree in context, but if we're going to try to lay it out practically, how do we, how do we do it? Do, do people just, as soon as they start cutting hair, go in shops that do they just raise their price as soon as they go in the shop? Is, is that like, how do we, how do we apply it? That's it. Why is it such a stressful day? The day that we give ourselves a raise. I That's came from terrible. a nine to five. I came from a nine to five background. That's why I'm so like, I'm precise with a lot of my business because I, I know what it's like to work a job. Yeah. And the day I got a raise in a job, it was a celebration. That day was yeah. a good day. When I want to give myself a raise as a barber, I'm stressed out. I'm going to argue or lose a client. It's like a, a bad day. Why is it a bad day the day that a barber wants to give himself a raise? I don't I don't get it. In the nine yeah. to five world, they, they get a raise and they're happy. When uh, they work more than eight hours, they get time and a half. How yeah. many barbers are out here working past eight hours and they're still charging regular price? That's why I appreciate coming from a nine to five background because I hit when I finally hit this game and I hit this game late. I was like 28 years old when I decided to cut hair for, to turn this hobby into a, a, a living. Yeah, And I was yeah. ready. I was ready. Anybody who hit me to work on a Sunday, there's barbers who've never had a job. Yeah. They don't even know, like, when you're working all day on a Saturday, that's a sacrifice. That's I, not I don't normal. get Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah, that's not normal, bro. Barbers, he else convinced me to do that, take Saturdays off. Yeah, no, I got barbers, barbershop taking Saturdays off now. Yeah, forget that. Barbers, we give up too much, bro. We, yeah. give up, we give up our Saturdays, our Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, every other holiday. Everybody's getting ready and drinking and popping and celebrating. And we're slaving away at the shop. We're always there for them. Bro, yeah, trust me, man. I, we're more valuable than people think, and that price can go up for no reason. I just I, that's the part where you lose me because you, you can't tell me that that bro is graduating barber school and is just gonna go and, and, and work in a shop where it's 30, 30, 30 bucks and just start at fifty dollars a cut. Is he on time? Yeah, ab absolutely. He's on time. Is, is he is he polite? He's polite. He's 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 a he's a sweetheart. He's cleaning all his, he's cleaning all his yep. tools. Yep. He's, he's doing sanitary job. is all hell, but his That's cut right. is yeah. His cut. All right. Listen, I've been to doctors. I've been to a, what do you call the doctors for little babies? A pediatrician. Pediatrician, right? Yeah. I, I I got a couple kids. I've been to pediatricians that sucked. Yeah, absolutely. Sucked. The, the way they touched. The way they picked up my babies, the way they checked temperature, the way they give them their little uh, shots. Some of them give shots better than others, right? Some yeah. of them make your kid cry hysterically. Some of them is just like, <laughs> and they don't even know what happened. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I know exactly what you're talking about. So the pediatrician that's very talented and does an amazing job, does he make the same amount as the pediatrician who just started? Bro, come, bro. This is what do they we need to be booked before they raise their price? This is what we got to do. It's true. This is, Those this is people what we have do. salaries. When when Bristol Hospital puts up a, a hiring for a, for a pediatrician, 
they get the job. That's it. Day one, they get paid the salary. There's no, you got to be booked before we give you full pay. There's no, people have to like you and you have to be good at what you do before you make the in $90,000 or whatever they make, 120, whatever they make. The, you know, there's a lot of professions out there that we don't even know if they're good. Do you know if your mechanic is talented when you first go there? No. Bro, I don't know if my mechanic is talented now. Wait, right. he gets the job done. So is the kid going to get the job done without you knowing if he's the yeah, best in bro. town? Yeah, bro, bro. It's the same, Mar. It's, bro. I Listen, I love it because I, I love the idea of... Harbors. I love the idea of us raising the bar, right? But but first and foremost, we, we, we always just talk about, not you specifically, but as an industry, we always talk about raising the prices without explaining yes, the path to doing it or 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 what is going to lead to it. So you, you'll have people that, like you asked me, you said, is he on time, right? Is, is he professional? Is Like those That's are good. things that can lead to you being able to build at these price points, sure, but we don't discuss that. We just say, uh, "All right, well, know your worth. Know know your worth. You should be getting more inflation than skyrocket everything. Just go up in price." So now we have these barbers who who maybe can do a, a nice fade, but lack in every other way, shape, or form. Get a little a uh, bit of content creation skills in in download cap cut, and now they post a, a video. To their their social media and now they're charging 60 70 dollars a cut and then you're getting people that go to these people and have a terrible experience ask themselves why the hell did i just pay 60 70 dollars for that and then they never go back to another barbershop because now gonna, it's like what am i spending i'm just gonna buy some con airs from from walmart and just start cutting my own hair i'm gonna pull something up marv let me know if you can see this let me know how you feel about this can you see that uh yeah, yep. I want there everybody. I want everybody to just read that. Let, should I let me know when to take it down, or just let me know? Should I just leave it there? Can you? See, all right, just let me know how you feel about it. I just want to know, you know, how I many feel doctors, like that's how a many troll. doctors are being disrespected like this? How many mechanics are being disrespected like this? How many? How many people? How many electricians are being disrespected like this? I just want to know. Well, how does it make you feel? It it makes me feel like this dude's a troll. And, and I and I hope he doesn't step foot in either one of our barber shops. All right, let, let me know how how it, how it makes you feel. Though. What, what, does that, what does that statement tell you about how he feels? What a barber's value is? No, he he feels like uh, okay. So so the better question then, right? That's a good one because he clearly doesn't value us at all. <clears throat> Why? No, he thinks he can fucking get a barber license and charge twenty bucks and take our customers like. I've had electricians charge me. Uh, can you see me again? Yeah, I've had I've had electricians charge me a price that I wasn't crazy about. I didn't feel like I could go get an electric license and then uh, just take his customers or whatever. I've had mechanics do shitty work. I've had mechanics do my brakes. A week later, one of my calipers came off. <laughs> he messed up. I called him. We got it. We you know he fixed it. Whatever, but. People so what's your solution to that? What 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 do you what do you, what's your solution to that? So this is the thing. Barbers are one of the most disrespected professionals ever, bro. Ever. Yeah. Like we we this is what I'm this is what I like to say. The barbershop in the 90s and the 2000s, they left they left us a bullshit industry. They left us garbage. They left us trash to pick up. We we picked this we picked this up. This generation of barbers that are in this chat and me and you and guys like me and you, we we took this up a notch. We're the ones that brought respect into this. We're the ones that are catching up to the cosmetologists. Right? Because yeah. we we are. The 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 generation that came before us, they left us trash, bro. They're they're the ones that that negotiated prices. They they did crappy work schedules that how long have hairdressers been working by appointment oh forever forever right do they do walk-ins walk do they do the walk-in thing with two cuts an hour 
I mean, it's, it's it's apples to oranges, but no. No, don't tell me it's apples to oranges. It's totally Every different time thing, I bring up a, 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 a comparison, their, their services these, are way longer. They're not I mean, having hold people on. coming in to do, getting a one all the way around or a gentleman's I mean, cut. Like, so I'm supposed look, to take an hour to do a gentleman's cut and, and talk this guy's ear off, bro. I, I cut a client a couple weeks ago, right? I had uh, he booked a 30 minute slot. I had a 45 minute window. Um, to just play with, right? So he came in. I cut. He had a basic haircut, a, a one on the sides, little trim on the top. So I had some time to just whatever. So I'm just chilling. We're having a conversation. We're laughing. We're, we're roasting. Realistically, I could have got him done in probably 20 minutes, right? 25 minutes, realistically, even faster if I started rushing, right? But I I dragged it because I had a little bit of time. So we get up to about the 35 minute point, and his phone rings, and uh, it's his woman, right? <laughs> So she's like, just like, where are you? Where are you? He's like, I'm in the barber chair. You know, I, I think he's just about done. I'll be there soon. I know I, I, he's just about done. I'll be there soon. Right. So at that point, I'm like, uh, hey, this took way longer than he thought it was going to take. So I, I could wrap it up at any moment. Moment It was a simple cut. So I ended up wrapping it up, um, sending him on his way. But I say all that because he came in there assuming that he just had a, a simple cut. He wasn't trying to be there for 45 minutes or an hour. He probably was thinking he's going to be in and out 15, 20 minutes. But me being the barber that wants to just take a little longer, pamper him, talk to him, do all that. Now he, he in trouble with his wifey and you already know how that go. So even if he loved the haircut, now he talking, she talking about where you going? And he's like, I'm going to get my haircut. Where are you going? The same guy I went to last time. Now it's a whole thing. Uh, you know uh, what I'm saying? I, I couldn't keep track of what you just said, Mark, but how long cosmetologists do appointments. Yeah, but who their makes, services who, who are way more, different than ours. They're doing hair. Who makes more money, Cosmos or Barbers? It, I mean, it depends. Because I, it depends. Bro. All right, it, all right. It, Mark, Mark, Mark. I'm sponsored who by- Who charges Disney. more? Listen, listen. I'm sponsored. No, it, they, they do. They get their money while they're in the shop for eight hours. Doesn't matter how they do it. I've been going- I took my daughters to get their hair cut for school. Listen to, they, listen to this one. Sorry. I don't want to get- uh, so you don't want to lose your I got, you, I, got you, I got you. I've been going to hair shows with Babyliss, right? Yeah. I'll do the Connecticut Barber Expo. I'll do the, um, you know, all, all the other expos that are around barber barber related, right? I'm at the booth. I see I see what the barbers are spending. I see how they go up to the clipper. I see how they look at it. I see how they turn it on. I see how they check it out. I see how they put it on their wrist. Uh, they're asking a million questions. How's the motor battery life? Did you guys fix this? Did you guys do that? I see that. Then I go work with Babeless and I see what they spend. Then I go work with Babeless and we're doing, uh, what's that big New York hair show, whatever over there? IBS? The IBS show, right? I go to IBS. I'm I'm at I'm at the booth and this hairdresser comes up and she goes, What's the newest you got? This these these right here. Let me get that one, that one, and that one. They, I, they believe, the I know salon. they bring them to the salon, they raise their prices a little bit because now they have new gear, and that's it. Barbers, we don't spend money. I don't you know, even know. It's not, I don't even know if that's barbers, cosmic. That's men and women, bro. Women spend money. Women will swipe that car. They, they spend compare, their money and they spend their man's money. That's not Cosmo and barbers. That's right. men and women, bro. All right. So you guys don't let me compare barbering to Walmart because that's a business. You don't let me compare it to gas prices because that's barrels of oil. Uh, uh, that's controlled by the presidents in the countries. Well, the women right. spend money. You know. So no, now I can hear to a woman money. that does women hair. I get yeah. women. Yeah, they spend money, bro. They spend their own money and they spend. Why? They, 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 Why? Be, I, because that's how they're wired, bro. No, 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 no. It's no, no. Christmas Who every day at my house from Who Amazon. Makes more money? My wife. Who makes more money, men or women? Now I got you. Men. So what are you talking about? Women spend the men's money, bro. Stop putting, bro. Every day is, you're not gonna tell me your wife ain't ordering off Amazon every day, Andy. I'm not hearing it. She ordering Man. off Amazon way more than you, bro. Stop playing. It's not that women spend more money. It's that women aren't scared to charge. Barbers are cowards. 
We're the most cowardly professional on this planet. Before we stand on our value and charge our worth, we're raring about what other people are willing to pay or can afford to pay. That's why we're 20 years behind. And that's why when it comes to hair, whether it's eyebrows, eyelashes, or cosmetology, or barbering, we, we get laughed at because we're at the bottom. We're coming up finally, but we're at the bottom. A eyelash tech, a eyelash tech will lay you back. She's with you for 20 minutes and she's going to charge you a buck 25, buck 50 for these eyelashes. The eyebrow lady, whatever, the little lady with the with the strings, she's charging 30 bucks and she's done in 18 minutes. Barbara's just scared. Barbara's are scared to, 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 to stand on their price, man. Why, why are we so scared? Why are we trying to figure out ways to cut more people per hour just to make the same value that other industries are making per hour but we're adding more work to ourselves why I, listen i agree with that I, like i said i i don't think you i i don't think you add the the more services the more work and all of that I, I agree but there's just there's so many variables bro because even even if we're doing the barber cosmetologist thing you you know bro that when them them women barbers come up they're spending i get women when the women dm me like they want to join the course they sign up right away, men. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm ready to, I'm ready to work, bro. I won't hear from them for three months. The women, when they send that, they signing up. You, you know what I'm saying? So I bet you, you got a lot of cosmetologists that sign up to your course. Believe it or not, I got so, so many I cosmetologists, makeup artists, all of that. But, but to say that they make more money, I, I can't necessarily agree with that because it, I, I can agree with they charge more, right? But because I brought money. my daughters. I, I brought my daughters. I, I can't agree with that, man. Because I brought my daughters to the the to get their hair done for school. Right? They were there for four hours. I paid her three hundred bucks for four hours. You you can make that. You can make more than that. I can make more than that doing a, doing a couple haircuts in the barber shop. So the so the charge more, sure, but they're also having people in their chair way longer than we are. No, so I, no, I, uh, they make a lot more money. They do that. That ticket is low, four hundred bucks. That's a quick cut and color. You know, maybe I, I don't know. I can't really talk about the Cosmo world because I don't do it. But I know yeah, for we're a both fact, sitting here acting like we're wearing the Cosmo. Yeah, wearing, I know. Salon and all that. I'll tell you what, my boy's sister. Right, this is this is how the only way I could because this is all I know. I was just before I started doing hair full time, and I didn't think there was money in barbering. This was maybe at least. 15 years ago, she was making 200 plus a year. And I thought that that shit just sounded like impossible to me. I remember going with, with her and, and my, and my boy to, to like get her mortgage stuff situated. And her base salary was like 180 a year, but she had like another 70,000, 70, in uh tips. Yeah. Which brought her up to 250. But the mortgage people, they didn't want to consider her tips as part of her part of her wage and, you know, affected whatever her, her loan power. But I remember those numbers to me at that time were crazy. So I know for a fact women wait, make way more money because I could tell, bro, go to go to IBS. Go see how they spend money. Go I see you how, ain't gotta, how Andy, you don't got to convince me that they spend money. I'd say. Like if I could do it all over from scratch, I probably would have just made a bunch of products and stuff for women because I know women spend money. I, I'm not gonna argue with you with that. Like I'm not. I know they spend. I I I know they spend. They spend their money and they. My wife spend my money too. I know how it goes. Uh, but, you taking a shot? You can't take a shot at the ladies. They're bro, the ladies money. spend money. I love hair, the ladies, bro. Hairdressers too. Hairdressers. Hairdressers too, bro. Like when you yeah, go to yeah. a. Because remember, bro, I, I've been going independently, but also with some of these companies to these big shows in Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, all over the U.S. When a cosmetologist, when those cosmetologists come in the room, like you could tell those yeah. are cosmetologists. They're, they're dressed up from head to toe, the nails done, hair done, makeup, everything, and they're spending big money. Those ladies know how to make money. That's why they've been doing appointments for so long and it's not because women spend more money than men men make they more do, money than bro women. they do and, yeah, and here's the other thing money. right why do they get to charge more 
right? Because, okay, if we, we can talk about, I'm, I'm bored. It's not about not being scared, bro. Like when you're going into these, sal- yes, bro. Because when you're going into these salons, you ain't walking into the weed cloud, bro. You ain't you ain't walking in with your kids and, and, and they got the most explicit music on. Uh, uh, they ain't dressed like bums up in there. You, you know, I'm, it, they're not ignoring you, right? So, all right, if we gotta, right. we're gonna, right? I'm glad so, you're bringing this up. I'm glad you're bringing this up. I'm going yeah, like this. Yeah, let let's go because because I think listen, I'm with you. It's not that I don't think we should get paid more or we should charge more. You you already know it's not about that. It's about uh-huh. what's it going to take to get us there. Aside from just saying that we need to charge more and we need to go up on prices and we need to know our worth. I think know our worth is a terrible strategy. So so yeah. for me, it's okay. If we're going to go up, we're going to make more money. How are we going to do it? So some of the strategy I share is Improve your cutting speed, fit 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 a, a bigger market of people, right? Build up that clientele like Andy Authentic did, like Marvin Marvy Marv did. So that way we can raise our price. We can we can uh get to a price point we're happy with, maybe start saving some uh time, right? Getting some of our time back so we can start doing all of these different things, right? I'm, I'm trying to deliver a strategy or we talk customer service, like this is how you improve customer service. This is how you uh come off as a professional. These things will help us raise that bar but I, I i don't just simply saying that we need to go up on price because we know our worth that's i think what drives me the craziest because i think it's just an absolutely terrible strategy and if we're going to use that as a strategy why are we going to stop at 40 dollars a cut or 50 dollars a cut why don't we just jump to 150 200 why don't we just jump to a thousand dollars a cut ten thousand dollars a cut and know our worth you know what i'm saying so I want to share one more slide, but before I do that, I want to I want to remember that I uh, wanted to say this. So we're not going to provide that experience like the salon does, where they give away wine, they give away champagne, they shampoo your hair before every service, which is something that maybe one percent of barbershops do, and they start charging those big big dollars. We're we're not going to get there unless we're charging money. It takes money to make money. So if you're not charging more money, you're not going to be able to afford a receptionist. You're not going to be able to hire a shampoo girl. You're not going to be able to to give away liquor and and little hors d'oeuvres or whatever we got to do to raise that that price. So I want to bring, I want to, I want to share this real quick. Let me know how you feel about this one, Marv. Yeah. <laughs> this, bro, this is, these are these are these are comments on yeah. social media that are talking about us. I know, but the the thing is, I get it. I I I see that. How does it, how does it, it make you feel? It what it does for me is it asks it, what it makes me do is think. Why do they think that? Why do they think that? And how can we change them from thinking that? That's what it makes me do. It, it, obviously, I think it's 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 bro. There's a lot of barbers making hundred dollars an hour, and we should be making hundred dollars an hour. We do some amazing stuff, but at a certain point, we got to ask ourselves, okay, why do so many people feel this way? And figure out what we got to do to change it so that we can change that mindset, so that people don't just look down on us and and don't respect us. There's a reason why, you know what I mean? It, so so, how do we solve that problem? An hour. Why can't we all make $100 an hour? You, because you we it. don't carry ourselves in that way, bro. We, right. we, we're not at the yeah. shop when we say we're going to be at the shop. We come in late because we don't got no appointments. We leave early because there ain't uh, nobody on our schedule. We be high as hell up in the shop. Forget to turn the open sign off. We don't sweep up the hair. We don't sanitize our tools. We, as an, as, as an industry, we got to elevate the barbering industry if we're going to be able to elevate these prices or the people, they're never going to take us serious. You know what works against elevating us in a, as, as an industry? Convincing barbers that they should do multiple haircuts per hour and skipping sanitation and skipping this, the conversation and the service and the details. Well... You never heard me say skip sanitation, bro. Uh, when you're squeezing multiple people no, in per no, hour, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, okay, How about this okay. one, Marv? How does this one make you feel? Which one? There's three of them up there. Hold up. Let me get this. All up. of them. 
hold on, hold on. He, just, he was just uh, talking crazy. I paid a barber hundred. I cut my hair. You guys have lost your mind. Better take it back to the fifteen. Cause that's a, oh, ooh. That's all we're worth. Yeah, I listen. I hear you, but why does he think that? Why? Look what he wants to do to us in the last one. Why does he think that? Because we're too scared to 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 stand on our value. That I don't. That's the part where I. I, yeah, I bro. I take it personal when somebody don't want to pay me what I'm worth. This is not a game, bro. If somebody comes in the shop trying to negotiate with me. I... You don't realize who you, this is the problem. This is where, this is one of the problems. You don't realize who you are. That's the, that's the problem. No, this is the problem, Andy. This is, you're so humble. You're so humble. It's like the post we posted. You're so humble and you're so down to earth and, and, and you're, and you're, you just don't realize who you are. You don't realize the 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 groundwork you've laid, the the sacrifices you made, the early mornings, late nights, the grind you put in to be able to get to that point where you're like, I'm upset if somebody tries to tell me what my worth is, bro. You've you've grinded your ass off, and then you got some other people out here that aren't carrying themselves the way that you are haven't put in the work like you've done, haven't attended the classes and 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 and, and missed out on things with your family and, and and had these layovers and get stuck in these terrible hotels and all of the groundwork that you done did to, to get to where you are. They're just trying to skip all that and say, you know what? I know my worth. $75 a cut. And and I think that's 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 part of what drives me the the most crazy is that that's right. what we see. I don't, I don't disagree. I, I don't, I personally, I can't say that my prices got to where they are because of my social media stuff. It helped a little bit, but you know, the guys that come see me every week and get ready for their family events or for work, they could care less about yeah, my, stuff. they don't even know me as like Marvy Marv like that. And, and, and I'm no. Marlon. So I, I get it, but you still have, how, how long you been cutting hair, bro? Oh, uh, 25 years. Bro, you've been cutting hair for about 45 years now, right? So you've been cutting hair for, yo, you've been you've been cutting hair for about 45 years, bro. You 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 probably had a clientele back in the day where you were so booked you couldn't you you didn't take lunches, you skipped lunches. Like, bro, you grinded to be able to get to where you you are now. So you you think yeah. that it we just we're just gonna be like, all right, well, you know, I it took me all of this to get to here, but now you know what? Forget all that. Y'all are straight out of barber school. We need to raise the bar. Go in the shop. I don't care if the shop owner is saying it's 30 bucks uh, or 35 bucks. We're going to start charging 65. I mean, you, you can't just wake up one day and charge whatever you want. I'm not I'm not saying that. But do do I think that our industry is undervalued right now? Yeah, badly. And, yeah. and it's very highly disrespected. Extremely John said you was cutting a Rosa Parks. Yo, bro, John, he, he ain't stopped, John. <laughs> Stop, John. Don't do. Uh, <laughs> I can show I, Andy. I, I, you can't. <laughs> I gotta. I, I want to see this one that I saved here. I can't even remember. Hold on. So go go over right. to where it says starred. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I mean another. Could I could I could I share yeah. another one? I don't know if you're tired of me sharing stuff. I'm nah. saying. But check check. As you're one. sharing it, barbers, real quick. If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow Andy Authentic on all social media platforms because Andy's the man. If you're enjoying this conversation, you want to see more like this, subscribe to the channel. And also make sure you take a screenshot, share this to your story. Let them know that it's a fun conversation going on over here and uh, come over and contribute. So, so I want to I want to read this one and I'm going to share what, what it makes me feel like. All right. This guy here said, fools want to make what nurses make. And why can't I make what a nurse makes? That's a fact. Who, who said that a barber is worth less than a nurse? Is that not like our background? Didn't we come from like a med medicinal background? Didn't I don't we? like that one, no, bro. We uh, we're not nurses, bro. We cut I, hair. No, no, no. I'm not saying we are. I'm just saying, why are we less than them? If a, if a nurse makes one forty a year, I should be able to make that too. It, right? I agree. But then he goes further, like a lot of clients do, and they said, "What happened to ten dollar haircuts to help the community?" Oh, okay. This is called guilt trip. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. This is called guilt trip. These are the people that 
hit us up to do free community haircuts for back to school and they make you feel like you have to do it. They yeah, make you feel like you have to give back. What, bro, the barber already gives up his weekends and his holidays and his back, his wrist, his legs. Why do we have to give up money too? It's all about money nowadays. I think a quick haircut should cost no more than $20. Those are those three haircuts an hour. Yeah, he'd, he'd be upset if he got more remorse here. <laughs> then he goes, what are you, a hair engineer? The F out of here, he says. Nah, you're a hair artist. You're the hair artist. Not, this is so listen, hair. if they don't respect me as a barber, they don't think my accolades are worth anything. They think we go to hair, hair school for one year and this other profession goes to school for eight years. You guys aren't worth the same. You guys, listen, if they're not going to respect us anyway, you might as well raise your price. And if they want to come, they come. If not. No, that's no, Andy. No, we, we can't have a bunch of barbers raising their price and sitting in the shop, just scrolling on their phone and just, well, you know, just. As there's, there's, now they got to pick up a part time job. They're, they're, they're Uber and Door dashing and, and delivering pizzas because they, they're like, I, I should be worth more. I should be res respect. We can't just. You know oh, why? You know why? Barber, you know why Tom, who raised his price to fifty five dollars minimum, is going to sit down on Wednesday. Arf. I'm waiting. Yeah, why? Why is he gonna sit down on Wednesday? Because John, that listened to you, he kept his price at twenty seven dollars. Bro, stop! No, no, that. you're not putting words in my mouth, Andy. You're not put. I never said we can play <clears throat> up the bit. We can play the video where I said if you you're too booked, you're too cheap, or whatever. I said <laughs> you booked up, raise your price. I I'm with. We're in agreement, bro. We're in agreement, dog. We're in agreement. I I just I think we gotta. I think where the the one part where we we where we uh, I don't even know if it's disagree where we just we see it a little different is yeah. you're just like let's raise the bar as an industry as a whole which I love that idea but it, it's it's to me it's more fantasy land for us just to be like ah right, we're just gonna all raise our price we, I, I would love to see that but is is yeah. is it practical all right no so so for me I'm like okay well let's think about it here. How can barbers make whatever seventy five, one hundred thousand dollars a year? Get to whatever price, point, whatever they're trying to make per year. How can they do that? So that's why I'm always trying my best to preach marketing, professionalism, customer service, learning how to cut faster. It's a ve very valuable skill set to have. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. As much as you take your time and do all uh, all of your additional services. If you had to put some pep in your step for whatever reason, I already know you could do two, three in an hour, but you just, sure. you're at a different point where you don't want to. That's so a, that's a good point. Sorry yeah, if so, I cut you off. No, you're good. Go ahead. I don't want you to lose your thought. So the reason why I can do three cuts an hour, I, I can definitely turn it up a gear and, you know, the cut might, the detail might not be the same, but I could get it done. Um, the reason you're going to get it done probably better than 97% of barbers because you're Andy authentic. You just don't, <laughs> you don't realize it. The reason why I don't do that though, is because number one, bro, I love cutting hair. You're an artist. I used to do this for free. Yes. Then I got tired of doing nine to fives. So I said, shit, if I'm going to be broke and miserable, I might as well go get my barber license. And I thought I was going to be a broke barber because at that time there was no money in this. But things changed. You know, the industry boomed. Social media put us out there where we are today. But the reason why I don't overexert myself in the shop is because I don't want to hate cutting hair, bro. I, agree. I don't want to get to the point where I just I come into the shop and I'm already like, is it six o'clock yet? I, I never want to feel like that. So that's why I price myself accordingly only to protect my passion. I that's agree. really why I price myself, bro. One, I was booked. And two, I never want to hate cutting hair. I want to make sure that when I leave the shop, I'm not tired and I have a pocket full of money. So yeah, that, yeah. that those are some reasons why I raise my prices. And I don't think a barber, when is it going to take for this barber who's cutting two people an hour every day? I think even two people an hour every day. Maybe you love it. Maybe you do. I don't know. I can't speak for it, everybody. Well, it depends. I, like me, I'm a people person, right? So this is, again, where the variables play, right? So for me, I'm a people person. I've honed my skill set to where 
I can get busy, right? I'm, I'm nice with it. And I got some clientele that is, uh, they're, they're simple cuts and they, they want to get in and out and they pay a higher premium to be able to get, a, a the quality cut I provide in a, in a timely fashion. Right. But for me, I, I there, there's not time again. I cut a lot less now because I do all this other stuff, but I, I'm not, I don't hate what I do, right? Like if I'm in a shop and I do, let's say 10, 10 haircuts in whatever, six hours or something, I'm not leaving drained. I'm not leaving it, it exhausted. I think that can happen for sure. If you're a certain type of person and it's just a lot of people's energies, you, you really wear them and you hold them. I think that could mentally exhaust you and drain you out for sure. Um, yeah. I think you can also get burnt out if you're just not effective with your time management um, and, and your skill set. And you just you you you're not as efficient as you could be as a barber. I could see where it can and get lead to getting burned out, but I just don't tie the idea of doing two haircuts an hour to you're doing that you're going to be burnt out because there are a lot of barbers that that aren't. They're barbers, you know, they're barbers doing 15, 20, 30 haircuts a day. Me, if I had to pick a, 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 a an amount of cuts, I I think is a, a a good spot to be at. I would say ten to twelve. But if you're going to do 10 to 12, I also think that you should be able to do 90% of those in 30 minutes or less. Cause if you're doing hour long cuts and you're, you know, you're doing 10 to 12 at that point, you're in the shop 12 hours, which I, I'd never recommend. I, I think we need to normalize barbers being in the shop, um, you know, eight hours or less. I, I don't like the idea of just staying to collect the money and squeeze everybody in. That's what I think leads to the burnout more than anything. Right. So I, I put this comment up on the screen because I want to get to it. But real quick, Marv, how many barbers do you know in all the time you've been cutting hair that quit cutting hair? You just got tired I, of it. Whatever reason they moved out of state or they got their uh, uh, what is it? The, the 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 license, the trucking license. What's yeah, they got their CDL. CDL. I was going to call it a DLC. I knew it was yeah. off. So the we, CDL. We, how many do you know that quit cutting hair? I tell you what, I, I know a good handful, and we're gonna see a lot more over the next year or two. All right, any of those handful that you know that were that quit cutting hair, they got tired of it, they hate it, they don't want to cut hair ever again. Were they charging top dollar? Um, not true, bro. No, not 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 that I can personally oh. know. No, nobody that charges top except dollar. for Delux. Delux got tired of charging two fifty a cut, so he retired from cutting hair. All right, so there, there no, there, there's nobody. one Delux. Nobody's going to quit their passion, especially when they're getting top dollar for it. That's a gift. That's a, that's a dream come true. Yeah, for sure. So, so 24 K Eric said, how many clients do you do a day that I give you a hundred dollars a haircut? So let's get, let's get this out there. I don't charge a hundred dollars for a cut, bro. Like in my area, people are charging 28, 25, $35 for a haircut. I charge 75 for a haircut. I'm already double what everybody else is charging. How long have you been cutting? 25 years. Just so you guys well, know, well, license ten years, so ten years, bro. Come on, bro. You've been I've been at the shop for ten years. years. Yeah, but the other fifteen. I've been years, in the shop longer than you. Kitchen. I was in my mom's kitchen for fifteen years as a kid, bro. So you can make you can make two fifty a cut from your mom's kitchen nowadays, no, no, according no, no, to social no. media, bro. So, so, so at a barber shop, I've been cutting hair as a dedicated barber for a living for ten years. But this is what I'm saying. I don't, I don't charge a hundred dollars a haircut, but when I'm booked, you want to come in early. That's one twenty five. When I go out of state and cut a celebrity, we're talking five, 600. I, I don't know what, 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 what why don't you charge a hundred dollars a cut? I, I probably could, but don't you? I'm still in a barbershop environment. So the barbers next to me, they're charging 30, $40. And it's already, it's already a little weird. And honestly, me personally, when a $75 client comes in, that gives me a hundred most of the time. I sit him in the chair and we got like maybe a barber two sta two stations down from me, got a baby crying. It just, it makes me feel like, ah, that's kind of messed up. Like this dude is giving me a buck uh, and he got to hear a baby cry. You're being too me. nice, yeah. Andy. You're being too nice, no, Andy. No. I know. Listen, I know. I'm going to, I'm going to go up too because I have to, because I'm too booked, but you know, I'm not scared of these questions. Like, yeah. you know, receipts, whatever for, for how many hundred dollar haircuts? I don't know. I don't even know where that, where that one was, how to unpin it, but you know, I, but listen, I make incredible money for a high school dropout. That's I got a GED 
And I hit a hundred grand a long time ago, baby. Ooh, a long time ago. That was a goal eight years ago. I've been hit that. I'm work. I'm 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 working on the third one after that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not even trying to be cocky, but bro, you put in that body of work. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're Andy yeah. authentic, bro. You're, <laughs> you're Andy authentic, and you're at seventy five dollars. But you're telling me that you want Mike to that just graduates barber school to go in there and be like, you know what? I know my worth. Seventy five dollars a cut. No, not seventy, not seventy five, but at least you know something more. But thirty dollars, thirty dollars a cut ain't nothing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up this. Uh, yeah, the the it, I listen. I I agree that you you should we should be higher than that. But that's just not the reality. Uh, unless the only way that that happens, bro, is if people just graduate school and go straight to suites, right? And and I think that's. Me personally, I think sweets are terrible for the industry. That's we, just we agree there. We agree there. I, I think, don't think they're, they're bad for the industry, but I don't I, think they're any good for a rookie. I think I think they're bro. When you're sending these beginner barbers with no marketing experience, no cutting experience, no barbering experience into a this lease, and and they're in there thinking it's going to be one way, and it turns out to be something else. I, I hate that idea. I think sweets are they have their place for sure. I, I do, right. right? Somebody like you would crush a sweet, right? Like they 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 I absolutely do, have I their run it back to back in a sweet. Yeah, you, you bro, you'd crush a sweet. But yeah. I mean, uh, aside from barbers graduating and going straight to sweets, how how do they get that price up when every shop that they're gonna go to, unless they're in like a LA or a NYC or somebody's higher you know, price spots, which ain't even really higher price because when you the compare, when you compare to every spending, anything you're gonna spend money on, it's, you know, you're getting a hundred dollars a cup, but you know, you're in New York city, everything else is way more. So it's not really a hundred dollars. Right. But how, how do the, how do you see it happening aside from barbers graduating school, going to suites and just starting at high price points that what did they just go into the shop and like, how, how does it play out? That's where I, I I'm stuck. Yeah, it's a different experience too. You know, I know a few guys that went to suites. The barbershop ain't for everybody, bro. You need thick skin. No, it's not at all. We're Especially to balls. toxic owners, toxic barbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. know. We're busting each other's balls at the shop. Pause. Oh, <laughs> hey, yo. hey yo, yo, whoa! The shop ain't for everybody, man. I know, I know dudes that get stressed out in the shop. Yeah, I've, for seen, sure. it. I've seen it happen, and. I, I don't know the the sweet the sweet is 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 a whole different experience. It's a whole different vibe. There's also clients that don't want to go to the shop. They don't want to hear TVs and conversations. They just want to you know do their own thing. Yeah, I I think the sweets have their spot, but I think I think the my biggest issue with the sweets more than anything, the more I think about it, is the fact that I think it adds to the the individualism in our industry. I think that's why we're, we're struggling a lot as a whole because we're so individualized and it's, and we're, we're getting so far away from building as a team. Like we'd rather have the whole grape than a piece of a watermelon. Like we're, we're getting sold that, you know, build your own business or else you're going to help somebody build theirs. And not everybody is, is made out to be a business owner. Right. And, and, and there are a lot of people that would flourish a, a lot better in a system that was ran by somebody else than trying to run some something on their own, you know? So I think part of the reason why I, I push back against sweets is because I, I see how it's creating so much. It's it just me, 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 and it's individualizing us. And I think that's a, a big issue in our industry. I, I think nine out of 10 dudes that go to a suite are going to fail, but I think that's, I think we need that. I think, okay. I think a lot of these mom entrepreneurs, these barbers that go to a shop, you can't tell me to sweep. I pay you rent. I don't want to have to cut that walk in. It's your shop. You cut them. I think yeah, those yeah. guys need to end up in a suite. They need to go be their own boss like they wish they could be. Right. Yeah, they yeah. need to go see what it's really like to be responsible for your own situation. And then when they finally realize the grass ain't greener on the other side, they'll come back to the barbershop being more appreciative of that business that was put together for them to succeed. Right. So I, I love sweets. I can't wait for more of these cocky barbers to go to suites. Remember that conversation we had where I have the humility of a barber yeah, just starting in this industry, but there's other barbers that, you know, they get a little bit of followers. They learn how to use enhancement. They get a viral video. Yeah. They um, learn how to do a little. 
And then all of a sudden they think, you know, they, they got it going on. I don't need you. Don't tell me what to do. You know, I'll charge what I want, do what I want. That that's that's a whole different, you know, that that's yeah. a monster. Certain yeah, yeah. situations create barber monsters and not in a good way. And those guys they need to get humbled. And I think a sweet does that I like I like the idea of a sweet man because I know they're gonna go in there and they're gonna get woken up like a kid that just moved out his mom's house. Yeah, and it's I think that, you know, I've been pushing back a lot against sweets because I feel like I got to provide the uh, overall perspective because you see all of the highlight stuff about sweets on social media, but you don't see the dark side of it, right? You don't see the isolation that people experience. Like we're creatures that are supposed to be like socializing for the most part, right? Like we, we need other people. So, you know, we don't see that, that isolation, that feeling like you're in a prison cell uh, uh, of cutting. Right. We don't we don't hear hear those stories. We don't hear about how depressing that is or how much of a toll it is on mental health. Just being alone all day in a suite. You know, what I mean, we don't we don't hear about the 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 struggles of the, the people that don't know how to get clientele. Right. Because they 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 never built a clientele. So they don't really know how to build a clientele. So they think that all they got to do is post to, to social media and then sit back and they're going to come flocking into the door. They don't know nothing about promoting themselves in real life or using Google or Facebook groups. They don't know nothing about that. So, you know, we don't hear the, the struggles of it. So that's why I feel like right. what I, what I try to do is be the side that, that shows that. So regardless, if you're going to go that route, you at least have some different viewpoints to make your decisions um, based on, I think sweets are great for established barbers. And barbers that have developed, you know, the skill sets we need to develop, not just haircutting, but, you know, just understanding how to run a business, market ourselves and different things like that. And especially more introverted people that don't want to deal with people at all. Um, I think sweets could be good for, but even that it's like, it, it, what, what, what bugs me too. I know I'd be all over the place, but what bugs me too is just how we have so many people enter an industry now that don't want to cut hair or don't want to deal with people. And I feel like that's what our industry is. Like we cut hair, but barbers don't want to be around people. They don't want to do more than two, three haircuts a day. And they just want to be able to charge $150 a cut from their bedroom. And, and, and it's like, all right, now I, I made it. Now I can post that this dude paid me 150 and it, and it just, I don't know. It part of it drives me crazy. I mean, I, I personally wouldn't go to a suite. I, I like being in a shop. I like, you know, going back and forth with people. I like to hear the latest news. I like to get opinions from different people in different chairs. But uh, one, one thing I wanted to bring up, and I forgot, I forgot to mention it earlier, is I think it's easier for me to find a client that'll give me 75 or better for a 45 minute to an hour haircut than it is for you to find a client that'll let you cut his hair in 20 minutes or less for $40. Not a shot, bro. Not a shot, bro. Yeah. My pool, my pool of people is way bigger than yours, bro. Marv, it's way remember, bigger. Remember, you're talking about that two on the side with the scissors and no shape up. If you're talking that, then probably bro, the but pool of people for probably, me to find probably, people to give me forty dollars. Probably with the right hair, and, and my brother with the burst fade. Those guys, bro. those guys Damn are bro. not going to give you forty dollars for a twenty minute haircut. It's easier for me. And maybe in my demographic or the type of haircuts I'm doing, I could play a part. For me to 75, 90, you know, that's all day for a 45 minutes to an hour haircut. I, I feel like those people are easier to find. So, so you think, obviously, demographic varies, right? Yeah. But you varies. think if we go to a, 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 a mall, you think if we walk in a mall where there's a crowded amount of people and you try to find somebody that's going to pay you $75 for that cut and i'm trying to find somebody that's going to pay me 40 dollars for i say 30 minute slots that's me right but we can say 20 minutes for the sake of argument you think you're gonna you find more people it. than i am i i think people who want a detailed dope haircut they want those burst fades they want the half moon they want the waves taken care of you're gonna cut a dude you're gonna cut a waiver in 20 minutes bro I say 90% of cuts. That's it's 90% of cuts. Sure, there's that 10% that you need more time. Yeah, but I, those I, guys ain't going where I'm from. Those guys ain't going to the barbershop. 
John, John, that guy that you keep posting with the one on the slide. And you got to don't come at John, bro. John been coming to me for years. Give yeah, me but he don't money. go to the barbershop where I'm from. He goes to the salon. Bro. He's he scared to go to the barbershop. He don't come in here. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is what people fail to realize. And it's something you're overlooking in this moment that we pay to have things faster. We'll pay higher prices to have things quicker. And you could, I, if you want, if, I, I know you don't need me to, but if you want, I can give you a hundred examples of different ways that we'll pay a higher price to get the result quicker. So if I can give somebody that nice haircut that normally is taking other barbers 45 minutes to an hour to do, I can do it in 30 minutes. They are going to be a lot more willing to pay me a higher price point just because I'm giving them that result that they're looking for. People are paying for results. They're not, there are people that do clock the time, but most people are paying for results. They're not paying for how long it takes you to do it. They're paying for you to do that nice haircut that Poppy wants with the enhancements and the low fade and the hot towel on the neck and the shape. That's what he's paying for. Yeah. Whether it takes you an hour or 45 minutes doesn't matter to him as long as the result is what the result's supposed to be. You're mixing barbershops, though. So, like, when you create a post and you tell barbers, guys, uh, you don't have to do these Photoshop blends and you have, don't. listen and have them, don't and have them approved by the high and mighty Bob. Yeah. Not even a high and it's the, the nobody bar. Mar, Mar, that's nobody what you be barber. saying. Mar, yeah, that's what you nobody saying. barber's trying to tell me my cut ain't it. Like, bro, if you don't go back to your mama's mama's basement in, in Idaho and get off my comment section. So I think there's a uh, super cuts, and then I think there's my barbershop. And then there's the in-between. So, so what you're doing is you might get the super cut client to come yep. see you for an extra eight to twelve dollars on top of what he's already paying extra, right? If Supercut is charging, what are, they pay, what are they paying at like sport clips and stuff like that? I know at least around me, they start at 25, I believe, around All me. right, so 25 plus tip is 28. So right. you're getting him to spend an extra $12, give you yep. 40 yep. to get a way better result. Right. And he's going to keep coming to me for, for the rest of his life. Why? What do you mean, why? Because it's a bargain. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Why, why are you happy with being a bargain? Because I'm looking at how much I'm making per minute, per much I'm making per day, how much I'm making per week, how much I'm making per year. It, it's about that dollar a minute you're talking about. So for me, if I can do two, Man, I wish two I haircuts in, in, in an hour, they're 30 minute slots, and I can get forty dollars for each of those cuts. I'm at eighty dollars for sixty minutes. That's over a dollar a minute. I wish I had some of these other comments that you, so you could see how. How clients talk about barbers that are a budget. Yeah, listen, if when I say like, when I say I charge 75 to and I get a hundred, whatever, there's clients that post online and they go, $75. Man, my barber charges me 30 bucks. I give him 40 and I'm out the door. Yeah. Go on my TikTok and read my because I make a lot of videos. This is why people hate barbershops to show barbers the dumb stuff we do. If you want to see crazy comments, bro, you go on my TikTok, you no, matter of fact, don't you do that because you are gonna get mad when you go in those comment sections. I get I get the stuff these people say, see, but I don't I don't let it get to me. I just read. Yeah, I just read. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just read. But you know, look at, look at, I, I don't, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, says Marv doesn't like people, that's why he gets them in and out. That bro, that's the most ridiculous thing that people say. I'll see more people on a day. How do I not like people when I'll see? 12 to 15 people when I'm in the shop where you, Gio, I don't know, you're probably 250 a cut, so you're seeing two a day. I'm seeing 12 to 15, and you tell me I don't like people? You don't want to see people. I want to see people. I just don't want to hang out with them all day. And they don't want to hang out with me all day. And you know why they don't want to hang out with me all day, Andy? You know why? Because they got lives. They got things they got to do. They got responsibilities. They got places to be in a haircut for 95% of the world, even though they love it and it changes their life. And it is one of the most valuable things they could get. And it, they feel like they're going to conquer the world. It's an inconvenience for most people. They're hitting you up last minute like, yo, I forgot to hit up Andy. I got to see if I can get in. 
oh, I got this thing this weekend. It's an inconvenience for them, right? Oh, no, so, no, me, no, no, no. so me Sorry. knowing, me knowing it's an inconvenience, I ain't going to hold you hostage all day just no. because I want to no. try to justify a higher price point. You're going to hit me up like, yo, Marv, you got time to get me in today? I'm going to be like, bro, I'm booked, but I got a 20-minute window if you can make it here. And they're going to be like, yo, Marv, I'll give you 100 if you get me in. And I'm going to say, see, I'll see you at 215, and I'm going to get them in and out, and they're going to be grateful for it. They're going to thank me for it, and they're going to go and pick up their kids from school, go to their the kid's game later on, and then hang out with their wife and get some rest, and then go to their 4 a.m. shift, bro. Hold on. So, Marv, you just expressed to me that you understand the true value of what we are and who we are in the community. We uplift people. We're there when they get married. We're there when their kids get their first haircut. We're there for their kids' middle school graduation, high school graduation, college graduation. We help them get their job. We help them get promoted. We help them get the girlfriend and we help them get married. Right. Yeah. You understand the value of a haircut. Absolutely. But at the same time, you're saying that they're inconvenienced to come into the barbershop Absolutely. Where, where, they're, where they're where they get all these memories at, where they're there with their kids for their first haircut. Absolutely. But this is the same guy that's saying that he wants the barbershop to, to rise in value. How? Yeah. If you're taking away what made the barbershop. But because it's a people. It's a hold on, Marv, let me finish. People in here having those conversations and talking and being a community. And neighbor and and just you know that melting pot of culture and opinion and talking about football, talking about politics, talking about Trump's toupee, talking about that 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 accident. Biden sleeping on himself. All that stuff. That's what makes the barbershop. Why you want to get him out in fifteen minutes? No, I don't, bro. The, bro, stop. I do thirty minute slots, bro. Stop it. I do thirty minute slots for ninety. Percent. Some I need 45 minutes for, some I need a some I need an hour for, right? But for 90%, I'm doing 30 minute slots. The the 15 minute ones are usually the squeeze ins that are throwing me the extra money, right? Or if there's a walk in that comes in, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna get him in and out real quick. The OG that you already know how they are, they want to be in and out. But bo, but I'm not booking 15 minute slots, Andy. Stop having stop acting like I'm in there doing yeah, Marv, some there's this there's this Chinese chick that uh, cuts hair. Her name's Toha. Where where I'm at? No, Toha, get them in and out in six minutes, bro. It's six minutes. Bro, you're not going to tell me that doing half hour slots. I'm not letting none of y'all convince me ever that doing half hour slots is stressful. Can it be? Sure. When you're when you're trying to market for me, yourself. For me it would be a nightmare. For sure, because your your market of people that you're marketing yourself to, you're a hair artist. You're a platform artist. You're Andy Authentic. You're you you're different, bro. Like you're, you're Picasso out here. You know what I'm saying? So you're marking yourself to a, a specific type of person, right? But for the everyday person, when I walk outside, no matter where I go, when I'm at every airport and I'm looking at people's hair, like a weirdo, cause that's what we do. I'm looking at all of these people's hair everywhere I go. And I see these are, these are just regular people. And, and I know that the vast majority of them that would love to come sit in my chair have me roast them, have me make them laugh, joke with them, inspire them a little bit, motivate them, give them a nice quality haircut and send them on their way so that they can go spend time with their family. Are you are you as are you as well known or more well known than I am than I am, Marv? Uh, it, it overall, I don't think so because you went viral for bro. You you did this to people. No, 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 no. But right now you're you're in the zone you, you, and you're bro, you did it. this. I didn't do this. Uh, but listen, I didn't do that. But listen, Marv, you people know you. You are as well known as me, maybe even more. I charge 75 a haircut. Why don't you charge 75 a haircut twice an hour? Because because okay, that's a great question. All right. So for me, my barbershop is in a, a city called Rensselaer. Marv, I'm from the hood. Don't tell I know, me I know, know, I know. Listen, my barbershop is in a city called Rensselaer, where I'm known long before all of this social media stuff. I'm Marlon that played ball that I was just, I did music. I'm just known in my community. Right. So my city has, oh, 9, they, got it. they got it. My, my, my city has 9,000 people, right? It's a small city. And the average income in my city is like $47,000. Right. That's the average income in my city. Right. Is there a Mercedes dealer in your city? It, that's the average income in my city. Right. So Marv, when, is there I, a Mercedes dealer in your city? When I look at the market rate in my area, 
when I look at the market rate in my area <laughs> and, and I look at my community, I'm happy with where I'm at. Bro, the the vast majority of my clients, the, the I cut some people for free still. Mark, right? Mark, how much is a Big people. Mac meal in your city, Mark? I cut some people for free. Mark, right? just answer my question. Come on, we're friends. I, I cut my listen, I, we're I cut friends. Some, I, answer I cut, my question. I cut some people for free. I even have this OG that he comes to me. I give him like a seven minute cut. He hands me a 20, but handed me 20 for about, about 10 years now, right? I cut I him know, like Mark, They love you, but Mark, right? is there a McDonald's in oh. your city? Listen, this is I'm trying to explain. How much to you. is a Big Mac meal? Just tell me how much I'm is a Big Mac to, meal in your city. I'm probably too much. I don't get Big Macs. No, but here's what I'm trying to explain. Just tell to me you. anything. Right? Is there a Honda dealer in your city? Listen, check this out. I think as no, a barber, no, what's important is who you're spending your time with, how you're spending your time with them. I'm very happy with my clientele. I know I, you there's, are. But there's nobody the on my schedule. You. Bro, there's nobody on my schedule that I look at and I'm like, I got to cut him today. Me neither. There's, there's Mark, nobody. answer the question. Right. Stop dancing. I'm well known. I charge 75. You're well known. You charge 40. Why? Because I'm telling you, you're not letting me get there. Just get to it. Because I'm happy with who I'm cutting. I'm happy with the money I'm making in the shop. And I'm in the shop. Two days a week, full time, in and out the other five for the VIPs or whatever. And I'm focusing my time on developing other high income and higher paying. I know, skills. I know, I know. That's listen, why. Before barbers, before barbers. But that's why. Why, why but, did you charge what you charged twice and up for two haircuts an hour? Why? Because did that you was. You believe your community can't afford it? No, I know my community can afford it, but we based our. Why did you say there's nine thousand people and they make forty five thousand a year? Because they're not, bro. You just said we can't afford it. Hundred dollars a haircut in my city, bro. No, I didn't say a hundred. I didn't say a hundred. I just said what you what you, what you're worth. You're you're yeah. Marv. You're it's Marv. You Marv. But you said you were complacent because you're happy with your clientele and you get along with them. I love my clientele. I love them too, but I'm it doesn't mean I can't charge them what I feel like I'm I, worth. I hear you. But I'm trying to get I'm trying to get to a point where I build so much in these other ways that I can just yeah, cut I know, for free. I know that. I That's know what I'm trying to get to. I know you're doing other things and I love it. But the point I'm trying to make is there are other people in small cities. And like yeah. I mentioned earlier, I came from a hood, poverty. I, I was around the corner from crackheads and all kind of craziness before I moved out here to yeah. a nicer city to raise my kids, by the way. It wasn't because I needed uh, different money. I was making good money in the hood. I was charging 40, 50 bucks back when haircuts were 20, 25 bucks in the hood and they were paying it. And Mark, yeah. there's a Honda dealer in your neighborhood that's charging 36 grand for a new Accord. McDonald's is charging $15 for a number one meal. And they're doing the same thing in Atlanta, Los Angeles, Miami, all those cities, all those cities are charging what Mercedes don't care if they're in the hood. If you want to drive a Mercedes, you're going to have to pay what they're charging. McDonald's does not cater to the budget in their area. They don't they don't care who's buying their number one meal. They're going to you're going to pay what it is. So why do barbers always come up with different ways to be scared to charge their money, whether it's their demographic, whether it's how many population are in their city, the median income, whatever it is. Why do because we Because you have to, because it's business, bro. You have to make decisions based on business. You can't just make decisions based on emotions or know your worth. You, you can't do that. You got to, bro, you got to look at the different analytics and stuff and make the moves that make the most sense for the business. And for me, Overall, the main point where I'm at where I'm at is because I love and enjoy my clientele and I'm happy with the money I, I make. I'm fine. I if too. I cut these people for the rest of my life, I'm fine. I am too. But just because yeah. we love what we do and love our clients, does that mean we have to be a bargain? No, no, of course not. And I'm not saying that, but I'm just the reason why I'm at the price point I'm at is because I'm happy there. I'm happy there. It's cool. It works for me. And I have a lot of free time to invest into learning additional skill sets that are higher paying skill sets than cutting hair. That's why, that's why we love you. But that's that there's one Marvy Marvin here. You know that, right? 
Bro, there's it's one Marty Marvin in the universe. Well, that's what I'm saying. You 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 can't. Not everybody's gonna be able to do what you do. I want to yeah. share this. Bro, I there's share there's this. so many times, and and again, for me, for me, it's about what am I making per minute? What am I making per day? What am I making per week? And when I'm in the shop, regardless of what my price point is, there's days I go and I do three haircuts and I'm leaving with 300 bucks. There's days when I go in and I'm doing, uh, you know, 10 haircuts and I'm leaving with 800 for the day. That's I'm cool with that. I feel like that if, if you can't live off of that as a barber, I mean, I, I don't know well, what to tell you. I'm, I'm I, cool with that. I always leave the shop with with something I'm happy with. Now, like I said earlier, I don't. I don't know. I'm not like a price gouger. I don't raise prices just because I want to make more money. I'm not, I'm never happy. I I raise my prices when I'm too booked. The reason being yeah, is I agree. if I'm going to lose a client, I might as well lose somebody who doesn't want to pay a price. And then I pass them on to somebody in the shop. I don't just close the door to them. You know, but if I'm going to lose somebody for any reason, it's not going to be because I'm too booked. Yeah. Gonna be because my price point doesn't match their lifestyle or what they are willing to pay for a haircut. So yeah, yeah. you know, I see a couple of comments here. People are like, "Marvis for the community." All right, like I'm not. You know, I I give away like a couple G's a year and and charity, all kind of stuff. Like we listen, we all love what we do, and just because you value yourself, don't start don't start telling barbers because they value themselves. Not this is not you, Marv. No, I know. They, they and I agree with what you're saying, too. I agree with what you're saying, that, just so people are clear. That they don't love what they do. Like, I love what I do, bro. I did this yeah. for free before I... But I just understood my value, and I wanted to raise my prices according to how busy I was. That's all. Yeah. So, guys, I, I want to share this real quick. I always talk about this when I do my classes. Uh, This is why... I, I tell people, man, if you're not making at least a dollar a minute... Which I'm making well over. Let's be clear. I know, I know, Marv. I'm not trying Let's to be you clear. Up. I got to play double that. Because these guys, there, there are people that are like, oh, this is cheap. Bro, I'm getting constantly handed 60, 80, 100, 100. I got handed 250 the other day for a cut. I'm I constantly know, getting handed yeah. that, y'all. So, no, I'm just, I, I got to pick a side and I yeah, got to act like you're the other side. That's Yeah, all. I know, I know. I don't know. All right. So I want to share this real quick. I want, I want guys to just take a look at it, right? This is something that I break down sometimes. I love I like, this. You did this for your class in um Pennsylvania, yeah. right? So I, I, can you see my my mouse or no? Like my Not, my my yeah yeah yep. All you right. might you might want to zoom in if you can. I don't know if you can. I don't. I'll, it'll come out try, of the picture, but try Command T if it will. Yeah, there you go. So I, I could zoom in a little, then I'll just scroll. But right. so yeah. guys, let's say for example, in a real world, bro, because. Listen, it sounds good when you say that you're getting $30 a haircut and you're cutting two adults an hour or you're doing $40 haircuts and you're getting two adults an hour. But we all know that you got to deal with shape ups, no shows, uh, walk in at regular price or children. Right. So I'm going to say that an average barber, somebody who's doing all right, 40 hours a week is getting 50 bucks an hour. And that's that's not crazy. Right, Marv? No. All right. So in real life. I got to zoom out. I got to zoom back out. In real life, in real life, this barber, he's going to have to pay taxes because that's that's what you're supposed to do. Now, if you're cheating the system, if you're on welfare, if you're claiming no, laws. Barbers don't do that. No barbers yeah. do that. Yeah. OK. So if you're cheating the system man, that you're you're you don't count, you can't be in this conversation. If you got state insurance, you're not paying for insurance or, or all this crazy shit. Like you, you shouldn't be talking in this conversation because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. All right. And I'm talking to a barber that wants to buy a house that wants to set up for retirement. And that is doing the things the way they're supposed to. So 40 hours a week, 2000 bucks fed. Ah, oh, you son of a. Oh, so fed. And he's first time using the computer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So fed and state tax minimum 23 to 28%. It varies a little based on state, but you could guarantee yourself. You're going to pay something around that. It's either individual or, or you're filing as an LLC. And by the way, all you uh, sweet guys, you're an LLC, all right? Because you have to start a business. Um, health insurance. Some of you guys are lucky and your wife works and gets your health insurance, whatever. That's usually about $600 a month. You're going to pay about $150 a week. Dental, $40 a month, $10 a week. You're going to rent a chair. You're going to rent a chair or you're going to be renting a suite or whatever you're doing. This average, $250 a week. Uh, that's cheap for a for a suite, by the way. 
So this is where yes, it gets so interesting. Deep. This is where it gets interesting, right? Usually when somebody works a nine to five, they get 20 personal days in sick time every year. And that's paid for. They also get six, at least six holiday days paid for. So in order for you as a self-employed barber to cover that, you're going to need to put away $150 a week. I got that number by dividing all those days and hours, and it came out to $30.67, which is right here. And it's really $153.35, but we're going to call it $150. All right. And what that does is it covers $50 hours, eight hours a day, and that's $400 a day. 26 days total that you want to take off a year unless you're a slave to your chair times 400. And this is how much $10,400 that you have to put away every year in order to take these days off. And that turns into the 30, 67 a day. So 339 days is what we're, we're left over from 26 days un, um, subtracted by 365 days a year. That's how many days we, we actually work. Right. So life insurance, 240 a month. I hope I ain't boring you guys. Sixty dollars a week. Now the retention's there. You see the people are sticking on. They're like, all right, we in class. So so listen, life insurance. If you guys have kids and you don't have life insurance, I'm sorry to tell you, this is why they call me authentic, but you're a bad father. Next, oh. barbers retirement <laughs> investment. Uh you, you went there. On, you? you went there. You plan on working. Uh. If you plan on working till you're 70, 80 years old, like that fool on TV that they interview, meet, meet Greg. He's been a barber for 65 years. He's 92 years old and he still cuts hair. Well, guess what? Greg failed. Yeah. Greg is not a, a success story. He failed. And I don't want to be Greg. I want to be able to enjoy my kids, enjoy my grandkids, enjoy seeing my kids graduate college. And I want to buy that house in, in the tropics and kick back. So guess what? I'm putting away 150 a week. So my SEP IRA or any other retirement way that or any other investment I want to do, and that's actually uh, less because I do a lot more. I do a lot more than that. Guess what? That two thousand dollars that you made turns into at the end of all this turns into that six six drum roll six sixty to seven seventy a week. That's what barbers actually make. Barry, I would argue they make less than that. If they're doing everything right, so now, now tell me, what well, what are what are we actually making? Like these barbers who are filling Hollywood because they're charging whatever they're charging, or the barber that's cutting two people an hour for thirty or thirty five. What what are you really making? I mean, it de it depends. I, I think the, the thing is, is I, I love all the numbers, bro. I a hundred percent, and I'm I'm with us making. I'm with us making more money. I just don't necessarily think that the way that we make more money is without having a clientele already as it is just show up to work tomorrow and say i'm gonna go up 20 dollars in my price point because uh, i know my worth i think there has 20, to be a not, strategy to get there not 20 but at least go up five bucks every year minimum that, or I, I five, agree. Bucks, five bucks twice a year I agree. and if we, we had done that we would be way way higher than 30 bucks I, if we, if all barbers were doing this, we'd be way higher than, than 30 bucks. It, it's not, but again, it's not just about going up in price. It's we have to carry ourselves like we See, deserve that. You're year. telling the barber he has to be a certain way in order he to. He does, bro. You, I just showed you he's not even making any money. No, Why do you want him to fit this? Because you do. Because you do. You got to be a professional. You got to have good customer service. You got to put out quality haircuts. You got to be provide a welcoming environment. We got to do do carry ourselves in a way that deserves to be respected and not carry ourselves however the hell we want because we're our own boss and this is how I want to operate and this is how I'm going to do it whether you like it or not. And I'm just going to charge you $75 a cut. We have to elevate the professionalism in our industry if we're going to elevate the price point or else people on the outside are market that we clearly have lost touch with. We're so in this barber bubble that we're just all a bunch of barbers. We've lost touch with the damn market. The market of people is never going to look at us and respect us if we don't carry ourselves in a way that deserves to be respected. So we just have to collectively be better overall. And as my man, Andy says, we'll raise our prices overall. And then I think that's how we get there. 
but not I don't I don't, I just I'm with you. I just don't like the idea of just all right tomorrow we're gonna go to the shop and you know what guys you know your worth go up in your price point. That's where I I I, I we we whatever ver whatever term it is disagree or don't see eye to eye whatever the case is. No, we agree. We agree on what it takes to get booked. I just feel like uh. We already we already hold a lot of stuff against us to get to get to a higher value. Customers already hold us back from raising prices. The last thing we need is barbers holding barbers back. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree. I just you always when I preach, my thing is whatever the starting price point is that you are at, because you're gonna graduate school, you're gonna go to a shop, whatever that is, you have to be at that price point, right? Get booked up at that price point, <clears throat> and then once you're booked up, go up in price. I think a faster way for you to make more money right out the gate is focus on learning how to improve your skill set so you can cut a little bit faster. You might only have to do that for a year or two, right? Cut a little bit quicker, and you elevate your price point to a certain point to where you can start doing like you do and, and a lot of barbers do and say, all right, now I'm going to scale back because I have this whole pool of people. Now I can scale back. I can make, do a dramatic increase in my price. I lose some people, but it doesn't matter because now I just free up a whole bunch of time and I'm making a, a, a whole lot of money. So I just think there just has to be some sort of a strategy at play. I think that's that's what, why I'm so passionate about some of the stuff I say. So the clients I cut, they want the hour long haircut. They're willing to pay top dollar for it. Those are one type of client. Marv told yeah. you guys about the guys that really <laughs> Don't want to be at the shop all day. They're willing to give you a quick two, 220s in and out quick, quick. You know, those are different type of clients. I, I've, I cut those clients. I, I used to rely on those clients, but you guys got to understand, you know, that's not a client that you want to cut on a Friday at 5 PM. You might want to try your best in my opinion to, to schedule those clients for a Tuesday around 1 PM after lunch, before lunch. Something like that. If you want to grow, well, why? Why? Because why? because you don't. You're not. Those are not the clients that's gonna end up allowing you to raise their price. Bro, I got clients that get ones on the side, scissor trim on top to give me eighty bucks. I got another client that gets he he gets he 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 gets a a, a, a two on the sides with, with a taper on the neck Mark, and gives me eighty listen, bucks. Listen to what you just said, Mark. You, yeah, a one on the side with a scissor yep. cut, eighty yep. bucks. Yep. It's harder to find him. Than it is to find that seventy-five, eighty-dollar client that wants the works that yeah. that I'm telling these guys to find. You realize you just described the unicorn with with that for sure, for sure. But I'd also argue, okay, if it's Friday at five p.m., you could cut the one guy that wants the works for an hour for seventy-five bucks, or you can cut two of those simple people for forty to fifty bucks, and make a eighty to hundred bucks in that same hour. Numbers, Mark, for quick haircuts, these are great numbers. And people pay them. They're paying twenty five to go to sports clips and and, and and get, you know, I ain't gonna, you know, <laughs> go to sports clips. And then they're tipping and, and giving fifty, sixty bucks to the people at sports clips. They won't, they won't give it to to the barber. Most, most, and this is my opinion. Most barbers in the United States of America to get fifty bucks, they're they're doing some beers with the razor, they're doing some burst fades, they they're going to hair shows, they're understanding. How to blend? They might be messing with enhancements. They're 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 laying down waves. They're using curl sponges. They're yeah. doing some some crops. They're using their blow dryer. They're this making is, their life harder than it needs to be. Or um, or or, or they're just hard. you're a hair artist, bro. You're a hair artist, and you thrive off of doing all of that extracurricular type of stuff. There are plenty of people that just want a three on the top and one on the side that won't hesitate to throw you 50, 60 bucks. 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. And Mark, for a 20 minute me, haircut. You just told me in your community they make 45 grand a year and yeah. there's no Mercedes dealers, but they're willing to pay 60 bucks for an 18 minute that's, haircut. That's, that's what we're going to do. I don't know. I just, I'm just trying to like make sure that I understand everything you're that's, saying. That's, that's what we're going to do. Or a two on the side with a little scissors on top and a quick little shape up. They don't even yeah. want a razor. You're describing the client that doesn't even care if you hit them with a razor. I, well, I hit all my clients with a razor. So I think he wants the razor. Yeah, but they're not boxing the front. But most of my clients are quick touch up. I got, I actually, I do a lot of skin fades too. I'm okay. nasty with skin fades fast. You showed us John. He was. Okay. 
okay, and you can scroll down my page and you see some blurries. Not you know, I'm no, you I'm can't nice hear, I'm I'm not authentic. Authentic. you, can't you know, I got I got that too, you know what I mean? But to 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 think that to think that you can't make very good money and be a barber that enjoys cutting hair and and is not stressed out to think that the only way you can do that is by charging a hundred dollars a haircut. I'm just in full disagreement with that. I think you could do that. I, obviously I don't want you at 20, 25, 30. I don't even want you there. Right. But that's where a lot of places are starting at. But as you get to the sweet spot, like I told you earlier, $40, 30 minute slots, you, you that's putting you over six figures. And right. when you think about right. the whole country, there's one, what, 15% of people that make over six figures. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's hilarious, bro. Can we get John on the live? So listen, last time I did 30 minute haircuts. Is he coming at John? Look, look. Last time I was doing 30 minute haircuts, right? When I was building my clientele, haircuts were at 25. If you guys are getting 50 for those nowadays, the industry has come a long way. Yeah, absolutely. What, well, it depends I, on the people listen, value. I love it. I love it. If you guys are doing it, I love it. But there's one thing that I also want to say, Marv. When you're online getting these guys to believe in themselves and charge and do this many people an hour, we yeah. can't we can't correlate their come up against Insta barbers. Like what you can't you peg them, you can't peg them against the the barbers that are well known or whatever. Stop DMing barbers, uh, these Insta barbers, asking them for their approval and all this stuff because you you create a separation. And you can't do that because guess guess why the industry grew? Did you understand what I said? I, I guess don't, why this industry grew. So you 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 want you want these you want the, so you want these barbers to do a haircut. You, this is what you're saying: do the haircut, not really care, not really care what the client thinks of it. Take the picture uh, and and go and DM Andy Authentic and say, "Hey, buddy, what do you think of my work?" What else? He can care That's what, what the client says. He can care what the client says. But he ain't gonna play. He ain't gonna play us, cause cause guess what? We if it weren't for us or the influence that barbers like me, the Los Cut it. Yeah. The, he's uh, another one who don't realize he's Los Cut it. He's a he's another one. All right, he but let's realize he's Los Cut. Just like you don't realize you're Andy Authentic. He he. That's that's my like OG. I I I, I like Los Cut it. What he does. I bought his Blueprint DVD exactly. back in the day. Me too actual DVD actual. Mm -hmm. DVD. So Hawk, Hawk, Hawk the Barber, Reveal Hawk, our aid. Um, Smash the Legend, right? These guys, all these guys have these awesome uh, influence on our industry. You, we can't start talking against what they did because if it weren't for that barber boom, if it weren't for that photo, even Photoshop haircuts, even Photoshop haircuts, I always say that they, raise they, our price. It, it, Photoshop haircuts helped me improve my skill set because I thought they were real at first, and I was trying to compete with that. As much as I don't like yeah. the Photoshop thing, it did. It did help me. So, so we can never say You're better. F F the industry leaders. I don't need anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Oh, I that never said that. Myself. I Marv, said Marv, I say Marv, random you, barbers online, bro. I say Marv, random barbers. You know what you're talking about. Bro, you're no, talking I'm about not. industry leaders, no, and then no. you call them high and mighty. No, no. Go, you pull it up. I say random barbers online. Hold on. Because, they want high and mighty. No, they, that's that's what they want. High maybe and mighty. back in 2015. Gather around, gather around all maybe, you cult maybe, followers of it's Marvin. Maybe 2015. I say ra these random <laughs> barbers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Get off of my line with that. No, random barbers bro. online is what I say. Mike from Idaho in his basement that comes on and says, Yo, bro, that edge up is not sharp enough. That edge up is not it. There's you missed the spot. Look at the weight there. That's what I'm, I'm not talking about. Uh, uh, the, the uh, Andy Authentics, right? Even though, hey, I would don't DM me either, right? Like, make your client happy, but I get it. But when I'm taking my little when I'm throwing my little shots, is yeah. at the it says random barbers online. That's what I say. Ran, that's my that's my wordy. That's my verbiage. Random they barbers online. Be yours, but when they come in there, your flock of loyal cult followers. Yo, don't come at my people, bro. <laughs> no, barbers, <laughs> drop the there. barbers in the chat, bro. When they come in there, man. No, drop the gems in the chat, bro. If yeah, you're enjoying well, it. Before y'all drop the gems in the chat, <laughs> just remember 10 years ago, before these industry leaders 
boosted this entire thing we do. Haircuts were $15, $12, $20, $25. So it took it took some Photoshop and it took some industry leaders. And yeah. it took a lot for you guys to charge 50 minimum. Is that what you're telling me? You guys are getting 40 and 50 bucks for a half hour haircut easily? It's fire. We, fire. We've elevated we as a, we, yeah. There we go. Now yeah, you're talking like you Andy Authentic, bro. I mean, I'm hey, saying. Now you're talking I'm like, there, there he is. Because I'll be there honest, if we're getting $100 every now and then, 75 easy in my area, and barbers, I, I know that barbers are talking about 40 like it ain't nothing. And it wasn't always like that. Yeah. No, I, I, I it. Because that, that is wild when you when you think about the numbers that we throw out like they're just normal or, or they're low. You know what I mean? Like, because there was a time where to think that a barber would get paid that. Like, Yo, bro, what? So we are we are in a, a very good oh. space. And I think it, and I think it's conversations like this to that are going to continue to propel the industry forward and, and, and having these conversations that people don't want to have, right. And, and sharing viewpoints and, and trying to, trying to figure out the path to get there because we, we're all trying to go the same direction, right? Like you and I are on the same page about everything, except for some of the things we, we look at a little different, but we're on the same page. We want barbers to make more money. We want barbers to, to, to have their life set up in a way that is supposed to be set up. We want all that. We want barbers to carry themselves like professionals. We want barbers to get nice at cut hair. We we want all that same thing. It's just figuring out how we deliver whatever messaging it's going to take to to get us there. Right. Right. No, but I I appreciate what you're doing, Marv. This is this is an awesome platform. Thank you for sharing it with me. Um and like I said before, man, you're a dude that's inspired me also. You, you know, throughout this this uh, engagement that we've had leading up to our interview, I've been calling you, asking you how I can create this video. I have this idea. You've been giving me freaking advice on how to create videos to attack you. So you're yeah. you're a beast, bro. You, you're a good dude. Um, I, I, I continue to learn from you. You're taking it to a different level. I'm happy with your growth. Thank you for sharing your platform with me. And, and you know, you know how we do, man. We're boys, bro. So we're just here trying to elevate the industry that we love. I hope yeah. uh, I hope I was able to share a few things. It's kind of like you say, you know, some of the ways I think and some of the things I say, uh, people actually value it. To me, it's just... Bro, guys, drop gems in the chat if you got a lot of value from what Andy said. Now, now, what I want you to do is make sure the chat is up, all right, Andy? So you can see this. Drop gems in the chat if <laughs> you got a lot of value from what Andy said. Because here's what I want to say, right? Not to cut you off, but... Um, Andy, Andy is the type of person that he sets the bar really high, as you could tell in his, 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 this conversation, right? Andy is trying to be his absolute best at all times. So when we're talking about, um, you know, these, this conversation and different things we, we want to do, Andy has that part of him where he's like, I nah, just, you know, I want to make sure the conversation is his value. Like true, true. I, I, I want to make sure I deliver. And I'm like, yo, bro, like, just general conversation with you is of value. Like I, I truly mean it when I say I, I, I think you just you're, you're so humble and you're such a dope person. You don't realize at times like you say, you know, your value and you know, your worth. But I think sometimes you you still don't really understand it, bro, because, you know, you're you've you've you help a lot of people. You've impacted so many people in a, a, a positive way, myself included. And you're doing so many amazing things for the industry. And I, I know I'm speaking for everybody on this live when I say everything I said, and, and, and especially when I say, you know, thank you, you know, you took two and a half hours of your time to hop on here. You gave amazing insight. Um, you help people. I, these, you seen all the gems come in. They're grateful. They tuned in. We got 200 people still watching. We've been live for two, two hours and 13 minutes. You know what I mean? Well, I, they probably want us to go for another two hour. hours. I uh -huh. didn't think we gonna make a half hour. I'm probably surprised. I'm surprised. I forgot how how interesting things could get. Yeah, God, I, don't know. I appreciate it, man. So, um, it, any man. last thing you want to say to them, or do you want to answer a, a question or two before you go? I, I feel like you probably got you got to go. Or no, nah, I'm good. I just you know, uh, <clears throat> I played devil's advocate and I went at Marv because I just wanted to be you know a contrast. But uh, I I I'm happy with the direction our industry is going. I don't think. Uh, there's a wrong way to skin the cat as long as you're doing as long as you're doing it 
in a way where you're happy how you provide for your family and you're just happy with your clientele in general. One thing that I that I definitely uh, take pride in is I, I don't do I don't do this every day and not love it. You know what I'm saying? Like I really still walk into the shop four days a week um, since the pandemic. I used to be in here three days a week, but the traveling slowed down. But I'm in here four days a week and I and I actually love it, bro. Like I'm still in love with this. I don't hate cutting hair. I look forward to seeing clients. I come in here sometimes down and as soon as I walk in and start cutting hair, I'm lifted back up. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is not a, a drag for me. Like I really love this and I, I fell in love with it before any of this stuff, before social media, before sponsorships, before anybody asked me to take a picture with them at a hair show. I was just a barber cutting hair, bro. So this is a dream come true for me. And I'm always treated like that. And and, and I, I love all that, bro. And and I love this comment too, because I think this kind of can sum up almost the conversation in a way, uh, which, you know, you may agree or disagree with, but I think a lot of times when you're even speaking about raising prices and all that, you're talking more to a barber who is got a clientele and is booked up. And like you said, is scared to raise their prices. I actually asked somebody on a live the other day, that telling me to a, a month booked out. And I'm like, bro, you got to raise your price. And he's yeah. just like, but I'm scared. And I'm like, I hear you. Everybody's scared. We're all scared. I said, mm -hmm. but if you just live your life based on making decisions only when you don't feel scared, you're really going to limit your growth. So, you know, it's not about not being scared. It's about doing what you know you need to do anyway and raise, raise those prices. Right. So I yeah. almost think with this comment, it, it, it is a great comment because it's almost like you speak to that barber that's got to that point. Whereas a lot of times I'm speaking to the barber that's still maybe a little before the spot where they get to you. So it's almost like I'm working Mars way to get to Andy's way type of thing. Now, again, you may agree with that or disagree with it, but I feel like that sums up um, where we may disagree. We just may be speaking to different people at the core at different parts on their journey. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> no, 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 you did not. Bro, bro, no, he did not, bro. Take a screenshot of this, guys. Take a screenshot. Bob, you know I had to get you, bro. Oh, no, you know I had to get you, bro. Not, he did not do this to me in my logo. No, I no, bro comes on. No, he come. No, he no, he comes on the YouTube live and does this. Oh no. Oh. Yo, I can't forget. I forgot to do this earlier. I had to pull it out. Nah, you saved it for the perfect time now. Uh, no. I love that. And just so you know, what we're doing right here, this is it's bigger than barbering. Yeah, I mean, these conversations, they're bigger than barbering. So just be aware. I can't believe he just did that, bro. Right? <laughs> right, yo. Yo, right, yo. bro? Oh, man. Everybody drop the $15. Drop the $15. Oh, and it, no, the 15, $15. Drop the $16.50. No, drop yo, the $11 shape up. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo, bro, why did the one dude, when you shared the price list, he's like, yo, is that Mars real price list? Yeah, had, bro. The kids at 10 bucks. The, the kids oh, at $10. <laughs> yeah, I love you, bro. Uh, I can't wait to see you at a hair show. Uh, Andy for the win. Yeah. Wh uh, where's the next one you're going to be at? Uh, Miami. Rolda. Rolda? When's that? Um, and I and I heard, let me get this background out of here. Yo, uh, and I, Andy I, for the win. Andy came through. Nah, he knew what he was doing. He came through and hit him with the I love it. I love it. I love it. Yo, he came through and hit it. Uh, that's good. You're the man, bro. We'll, we'll, we'll catch up, broski. Thank you for everybody who tuned in. Yes. So, guys, lastly, before I boot Andy off my pay, I'm booting him. He getting booted. But, uh, Make sure you follow Andy on all platforms. You know what I mean? That's my guy right there. Take a screenshot. You know what I'm saying? Share it to the story. Let the people know you enjoyed this conversation. And uh, let us know if you want to see more conversations between uh, me and Andy. Because we didn't cover a lot of different things. You know, Andy's been able to be a, a platform artist, travel all over the world. Uh, he got his own clipper, right? I'm sure some of you guys would like to hear some of those stories and learn how to do all of that. Um, there's so many things we could talk about. This was just the topic we want to cover tonight. Um, take the screenshot, guys. Uh, Mar, don't stop doing yo. This dude is mad funny, bro. <laughs> yo. Oh, you um, know what? That Atlantic City barber show on October. I'm gonna go to that. I just I'll heard see you there. Happened. See you there. Are you gonna be over there? Yeah, so because uh Angel, you know Angel, right? Blends, Angel Blends. 
No, uh, I just heard about it today, literally. So he's somebody that, like, when I first started building an industry, you know how you, like, meet people as you go? Right. So, like, I, I met him early on, long before Barbers and Marvin Marvin and all that. So he reached out to me. And I, he's involved in it in some way, and he's like, yo, you should come out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make the drive. I've been rocking with him for years. He, You know, we've known each other long before all this, so I, I'll be there. I was thinking about taking a flight to Philly. It'll cut my commute down two hours. Yeah. All right, bet. So I see you. I bring him pops too. So pops, I don't, you yeah. met my pops, right or no? I met your family the other day, and that's dope. So I'm glad. I'm glad I saw you doing that. That's a big step for a lot of us who stay busy. Got you. So, any last thing you want to say? Are you good to go, bro? I'm good, man. Thank you. I appreciate the platform, and uh, it was good chopping. Yes, appreciate you. All right, barbers. Until next time, keep chasing greatness. Keep pushing. And uh, we will tap in with you soon. Andy, don't leave right yet. Wait a minute. I'm going to end the stream. Barbers, because I want to chat with you for a minute. Okay.